Welcome to Trivial Debates. Welcome to this week's edition of Trivial Debates. Congratulations, everybody. You're here. Thank you. That's that for down one, but we'll talk about that another time. We have some awesome new debates this week. Each week, our panelists will be judged and scored on the arguments for facts, passion, creativity, and how much they can suck up to me. Oh, passion is one of them? I didn't even know that. Really? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's Dave's whole game. Oh, okay. Dave's whole game's about passion. Right. Without the passion, I'm he's got nothing. I'm a I only come with facts, and I'm going to two juggernauts of passion. That's true. They both are passion. That's <laughs> for sure. I'd say on the passion scale, I'd say Kevin's the least passionate. He's like, I don't know. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he wins based off <laughs> zero passion. That's true. That's true. Very good. Uh, our week's panelists are... Chris Seymour. Chris Seymour. Dave Mater. Jeff Mater. Jeff and Dave. Ooh. And we got Eamon Mater. And we got Eamon Mater here. And I'm doing the fact checking. We got well, the most winningness and the most losingness. That's true. Uh, <laughs> see, I wasn't even going to go there this time. I was going to give Dave a break well, because he was originally supposed to be my right hand this time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And he, we had to back out, unfortunately. I'm 0 7, I believe, or something. I think you're 0 8, actually. 0 and 8 is a pretty bad record, Dave. Yeah, that's terrible. Oh, man. <laughs> but you know what? Are you I, the only I'm not even going to say yet? today is going to be your day because we've always said that and it never has been. So maybe if we don't say that, <laughs> this it. is the one. Is this is, is this the only time you have? Are you the only person who hasn't won yet? I have never won. Chris is the one. Well, technically the people who only showed only up for one I've only been on the podcast. show one time, Jeff. So no, I won like, my first time. That's true. You he won your first win. No, you, Jerry beat you the first time. Oh, that's true. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, so true. The Jerry. This is my second time. Now All right, anyway, gentlemen. what's going on. I'm going to win. <laughs> All right. Save the passion for later. I got All more right. stuff to read off this list here. So basically how this podcast works, or this show, I guess we could refer to it as as well. Uh, there are six rounds plus a speed round by our top two panelists. Uh, the categories are movies, television, music, sports, history, as well as a wacky little wild card in there. Uh, the top two panels will advance the speed round. Uh, we will be the w- I will be the one that judges that. I will also ask for input from my, my fact checker if I'm a little on the fence here. Um, and I just want to let you all know I'm running a tight ship here, boys. I, I'm not going to accept anything unless we're making fun of Dave. All right. So anyway, past that. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, people will be passionate about their arguments, and I know I have at least two on the table that are, so I'm going to need you to step up your game a bit, Jeff. Yeah, I'm going to Passion needs to come yeah. out because you have two juggernauts of passion here at the uh, table I'm today. I'm more worried about Chris than Dave. I've, I've uh, had Dave before. Chris I think you should be worried about Dave as well because if there's one thing Dave is good at, it's passion. Uh, oh, I've never battled you, Jeff. And, and I remind any up. listener who doesn't, <laughs> who isn't familiar with Dave's passion to go back a couple episodes to the Malcolm X X-Men thing because that is still Still by far probably one of the best things I've ever heard on this show. Hello, Voltron. Uh, Voltron, Voltron is way better. But you repeated the same thing over and over again. It's but, not really passion then. But he was so like convinced. He, he was me, convinced. He always had me going. I'm he like, was to the point where he's like, I can't believe you guys are this stupid. I was yeah, like, Voltron yeah. Voltron is the best. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Voltron's the master See? of the universe. All right. okay. So keep in mind that we can also you can also skip to a new debate by looking at the time indexes in the descriptions uh, on the YouTube channels, for instance, uh, and going into the battles that interest you most. So for instance, if you're bored of the television one, you can skip ahead to music or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure that you guys subscribe to our iTunes feed. We have an iTunes feed. We're exciting. Oh, that's good. That's pretty yeah, exciting, like isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you like yeah, that? That's iTunes? where I find all my podcasts. It's yeah, like... there's some great podcasts on there. Uh, as well as follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. People still use that. And <laughs> Instagram. We still haven't got our uh, Plenty of Fish one, have we? No. We no. should do that. We should just post like a big group shot and be like, hey. Ladies. He wanted that. He wanted Ashley Madison, remember? Well, that'd be Chris. <laughs> Why not? Huh? Why not? Why not? Exactly. Just a group of fool around on your wife with a bunch of dudes at a podcast. All right. Anyway. Hey, I'm the one. And we're not serious for anybody who happens to be listening that knows us. That thing probably. I'm the one that wanted the foursome. <laughs> yeah, but you wanted it with the people at the table, Chris. That's a little different. Anyway. Uh, whether you're listening to iTunes or watching the YouTube version, all links and information can be found in the, in the description or at our website at 
TrivialDebates.com. TrivialDebates.com, where Dave has uh, done a fine this job. Is a website of, now? Absolutely, this has a website. Yeah, yeah right, we got a website. You obviously haven't been listening, young man. We actually have a website. I didn't even know that. All right. <laughs> As leader of ceremonies today, I start off this podcast, and I'm going to start this with Dave today. We're doing movies. We're doing movies. So the question, gentlemen, what is the best movie written by John Hughes? And trust me, that's not an easy thing to pick. And there are lots of. There, there were 48 movies. credits on IMDb. 48. That's a lot of movies. But only eight he directed. That's true. So there's a lot more choices for the writing than there is directing. There is for sure. So Dave, what is your answer? The question is written by John Hughes, though. Hey, hey, I'm in charge now. Anyways, it's it okay. says written, but that's okay. As long my as you pick one that was my written. answer does isn't one of the ones he directed. And I'm pretty sure if he directed it, I'm pretty sure he wrote it too. I think all the ones that he directed were Correct. written yeah. by him as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So I think either way, you're safe. So there's like a, a holy eight of which ones I guess he wrote and directed. And yeah, but it doesn't necessarily. Have to be I don't directed. know if that makes them better. And I didn't say it was better. It's just more right. like that's my, a John Hughes movie. My film actually has a pretty good director that's not John Hughes. My film is one of the highest grossing films of all time. I picked 1990s Home Alone. Home Alone. Uh, really? <laughs> one hey, the, you leave him be. This could be good. <laughs> one of the greatest Christmas movies that was ever done. This movie, Macaulay Culkin, is sensational in the role. Oh my god. Ah! Like, holy crap, right? How'd that go? Ah! There you, you know? go. And that's the only scene any of us ever remember from the movie. Oh, oh, he's no. already getting in the gifts. Oh. You know, maybe if you're old like you, Chris, like it's not, <laughs> it's not the same. It's uh, for us. When I was seven years old, this movie was the shit. This movie is still played every year. I've never heard anyone say, oh, what is the shit? I've never heard that. No. Did I not tell you about the passion? <laughs> no, I... He hasn't even got into the passion yet, and he's already starting it. Home Alone. It's got, one of, it's got a fantastic cast, a great premise about irresponsible parenting. You know, leaving their kids... That was very irresponsible. A terrible family. You know, when he's like... They don't even know the buddy system. What's going on? Like, they got tons of people there. How many of the lines in that movie can you quote? There's so many... When I grow up, I'm living alone. Do you hear me? I'm living alone. Everyone lives alone when they grow up, Dave. And That's not true. Like, That's okay, not they, don't, they don't live alone, but they live like without their parents, which is what he was referring to. No, he was going to live alone. No family. <laughs> no family. But then he learned the value of family throughout the film. It's quite the morality tale. Okay, like, um, aside from Macaulay Culkin... We got Joe Pesci, we got Daniel Stern as the wet bandits, stealing the stuff, going around home to home. You know, he can't, coming right off of Goodfellas, Joe Pesci delivers a fantastic performance that I think he could have won an Oscar for as well. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Like, <laughs> are we going to bring up Goodfellas again? The freaking guy slips on the stairs and hits his head. And you think that's, that's, that's hilarious. Oscar, that's an Oscar winning, winning these are, performance? These are two no. of the dumbest criminals in film history. <laughs> that was kind of the point, I think. Oh, that was the totally point. the point, yeah. but... I don't you know, could take them seriously. That was the whole point. Macaulay Culkin is the most sadistic ten-year-old that ever lived. Like he literally like tortures these two guys when they try to invade his home. He electrocutes them. He burns them. He puts like uh, he uh, paint cans through their heads. Yeah. He like, he like. The, I can help you, Dave. He makes them step on <laughs> like <laughs> ornaments and yeah. he, micro he machines. He freaking puts feathers on them and glue. And He's a micro a machine. Spider, spider craw, 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 crawls on his face. Spider, spider crawls face. on his face. There are so many memorable moments in this film. But how about the scary old man who lives across the street who apparently. Kills yeah, bodies and disposes them with the salt. Yeah, there's a lot of creepy moments in Home Alone, like where he's afraid yeah. of the 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 the, 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 uh, the dryer and the washer in the basement, and he's afraid of the furnace. Which yeah. never made any sense because if you're a ten year old kid, which I think he was ten, was yeah, he? roughly, yeah, something like that. Yeah, no, ten year old kid who's smart enough to put like an iron on a doorknob. <laughs> yeah, but he's scared of a dryer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the hell? That's that. That's the same mentality as your dog, you know? Your dog is like, fucking, I will fucking kill the guy that's at the door, you know, and I will kill that fucking garbage truck that's going down there, but, you know, if there's thunder out, you know, I'm going to fucking freak out, you know? It's like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I, I, I think this is one of the worst John, movie, John Hughes movies of all time. Okay, you'll have your chance. It's, you'll have your chance. It's, it's the, box o- the box office disagrees. All right, Dave, you got to You got to I'm running a tight okay, ship here okay. today. Uh, just to, like John Candy with a great cameo coming off of Uncle Buck, where of course he the first time he had worked with Macaulay. also a John Hughes movie, also a John Hughes movie. But this is a superior John Hughes movie. This is 
This is the best John Hughes film. Ever. All right. The All score. Right. Chris Columbus, come on. All right, you're done. Because I said so. Uh, and I'm the boss. You're the boss this Remember week? that. Okay. I'm the boss. All right. My Jeff, dad. I think you're next, buddy. Speaking of John Candy, and I didn't go Uncle Buck. I went planes, trains, and automobiles. This movie is the best movie written by John Hughes. The writing in this movie is fantastic. It's not, it is more geared toward adults, but it is awesome for that reason. You know, the it's movie, family friendly enough, though. Yeah, there wasn't really any is, weird moments in there that you're like, eh, I shouldn't well, let my kid watch. Well, oh, the part where he wakes up with John Candy. Uh, yeah, that was a little weird. But at the same time, there's, it's not that bad, but it's just for kids aren't going to care that language. Much for yeah. language, it, it, you know, there's a lot of f bombs. There is a lot of f bombs. In, but in, in my house, there's a lot of f bombs anyway. So and the thing sense. that's brilliant about the writing is all the devices he uses, especially with the trunk case. Uh, oh, John yeah. Candy's, and right at the beginning of the movie, when he's running across the street with you know Kevin Bacon, and then he eventually he trips over this case, and you know the Kevin Bacon gets the taxi cab and. You know, on he goes throughout this adventure where he has to deal with John Candy, you know, from New York to Chicago, which is quite the experience where he goes, you know, going through planes, trains, and automobiles and all the um, mishaps and misfortunes. Trying to get home for Thanksgiving. That's what the, really the premise of it is. That is true. Sure, but, but it made it funny. Well, to be clear, That's though, in Home Alone, the mother is trying to get home. All the time, like so, that's the entire movie. Exactly Every time you see her, she's like, "I gotta get home to Kevin." But that's not the point. <laughs> you know, it's like the writing is what's so fantastic. The dialogue between Steve Martin and John Candy, the just the moments that you you really experience with them, where you you kind of like you're in the shoes of Steve Martin, and you really are starting to get aggravated by John Candy for the first part of the movie, and then you start to turn around on John Candy, <clears throat> and you just start laughing. And when you when I was watching that movie when I was a kid. I was like, I don't understand what the problem is with John Candy. He seems like a great guy in this movie. Like, and it seems like the Steve Martin character, the Neil Page, uh, yeah, yeah. is is like the biggest uptight asshole that ever walked the face of the earth, right? <laughs> Chris well, is already th- like, you guys are done. But, uh, <laughs> I, th- I think with that character of uh, Neil is you. He's the character you're supposed to relate to at first, and then you. You know, they did a recent movie called Due Date that came yeah. out a few years ago, and it's basically a retelling of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I heard that. I've never seen it. But. Oh, my God. Like, I was like, I, I watched it. I was like, this is the exact same plot devices where, you know, you got Robert Downey Jr. is, the, you know, the dickhead, and Zach Galifianakis is the, you know, the big loaf, and is just basically, you know, pissing off the main character, and you kind of are on the, like Dave was saying, on the John Candy side more than you are on the Steve Martin side, but you're, the, that's not how the movie is, is is basically portrayed toward you, and I think that's what's so great about Plain Strange and Automobiles is you kind of have to feel for both sides, and it's hilarious if you just allow it to be. I will say about Plain Strange and Automobiles, it is, John Hughes uh, said it's one of his favorite movies, uh, Steve Martin said it's his favorite movie that he was ever in, uh, he's been in a lot of movies. Like I sounds like a point of Jeff to me. Full disclosure, I I picked this movie as well. But you I, did, yeah. But I yeah, Jeff got it in first. Yeah, he got it in. And first. you technically weren't supposed uh, to be. But like, <laughs> I watched. Our mother loved this movie like crazy. We yeah, watched this yeah. movie like a ton. It doesn't matter that uh, you guys both picked this because you're brothers. So I would assume you would pick the same thing. But well, you're both wrong. <laughs> anyway, I'll go right. to my favorite scene. I just want to oh, real yeah, quick. My really quick. Scene in the movie is where he's at the the bus terminal or the car rental terminal. Oh yeah, and he, you know he drops a lot of f bombs, but he's oh, yeah. just like I'm in a fucking you know highway in the middle of the fucking you know road, and I didn't appreciate where my car fucking you know blew down, and he's like I don't want to look at your fucking face, and yeah, she's yeah. like, Do you have your rental receipt? And he goes, <laughs> No. Goes, <laughs> oh, then you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it was just really well delivered that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Chris, let's hear it. What was your pick? My favorite movie from John Hughes is The Breakfast Club. And you guys probably don't know it because you guys are too young. I've seen it. You've seen it? Yeah. You've seen it, Dave? Have you seen it? I've seen it a bunch of times, yeah. You know what? It's one of the greatest high school films. As high one of, school? It's a, it's a high school film. It's a high school you film. He said that like a southerner. He did kind of say that like a southerner. But it's one of probably Hughes' most recognizable film, I think, of all time. It is think, definitely high on the list, yes. You know what? It, it, you could ask people who knows Plane Trains and Automobiles, who knows Home Alone. Everybody knows Home Alone. Everybody knows Home Alone because they're fucking 12. Okay? <laughs> And that's when that's hey, he's twelve. Yeah, that's he's the age. 12. That's the age are when you when when you see Home Alone. But okay, the Breakfast Club was 
a film from 1985. One of his first films. Okay? And it features, like, many types of personalities. It features, like, five, five people in a room in the library. It features, like, a princess. Five Molly, st- stereotypes. Five stereotypes. stereotypes, yeah. Princess, Molly Ringwald, an athlete, uh, a brain, like a criminal, like a basket case, which now, now, nowadays it would be described as emo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, go, you gotta remember, this is... Um, yeah, that was Ali Sheedy. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is before the days of the internet, right? It's true. Um, Long before. We, yeah, we got the internet now, and like, these kind of clicks... Click together, right? Nerds and jer- nerds and jocks kind of click together now. It's nerds not. It's not like. It's not like back in the old days, right? I thought this was the old days. No, the old days is like the eighties. This is nineteen. 19- what? <laughs> this is like. <laughs> yeah, you lost me on that one. This is thirty years ago. Well, it's it's it it's it. The movie is about like the struggle of American teenagers to be understood. Right? During that point it's, in time, yeah. Yeah, during that point in time. I think Chris is trying to say it's not like that anymore. I thought it's right. more to do, and, yeah, and they, to do with their parents. You know what? I, like you know what parents. I think? Like all of the a characters, of them, yeah. all of the characters are like the, the the leads of their social group. Like the nerd is like the top of his nerds. Like the the jock is the top of his jocks, right? <laughs> it's like the Avengers. It, yeah. it shows. <laughs> it's the Avengers of teenage kids in the eighties. Yeah, if yeah. they were on detention. It's a great movie because it shows it's stereotypical teens in school. And the way they act and how they come from different cliques, right? And they talk to each other, other even though, you know what? These people wouldn't talk to, to each other normally in school, right? They talk to each other only because they're in detention. The princess and the jock, sort of. The princess, the jock, the, like all these groups come together because they're all in detention at the same time. It's not like if they were in school at the 80s, they wouldn't talk to each other. Like nowadays... Nowadays, it's different. It would be like the jock would be texting the princess. Like, hey, babe, do you want to go on a date? No. That no. wouldn't have happened in the 80s? That would not have happened in the 80s. So you're saying because of technology, that's the only that was the last chance for that to occur? No, <laughs> I'm not saying that. This could last... never have happened in 1995. Okay, you know what? <laughs> and it's, it's also... They're also all dealing with different demons, right? They all have their separate problems. Like, the brain, he tried to commit suicide. Like, um, they, they all... Because he got a B. Because he got a B, yes, and his parents wouldn't accept him. Tear jerker. Yeah, I thought it's, again, it's a, I thought that movie... All right, wrap it up, Chris. Everything to do with their parents. (sighs) They all talk about their parents not, like, liking them, basically, so they, like, they're they're not good enough for their parents. Hey, Sonny, I got a pack of smokes for Christmas for you. Right, yeah, yeah, You know what, okay, maybe, maybe you can argue with... That they all found a common enemy in the establishment, okay? Mm-hmm. They all they all were against the teachers. They were all against their parents. They were against they were all, any authority figure, all, yeah. Uh, but I'd like to think it's something to do with those few hours of bonding that caused them to drop all their pre-precautions and to see each other for the way they were. Like, it was a chance for all of those groups to get together yeah. and see each other. Like, so the nerds and the jocks and the brainers and everyone could get together and... They could all get together and realize that they were just kids going through stuff. And they all like end up as couples at the end. They, Except for the nerd, he doesn't get anybody. Well, alrighty. Yeah. So I'm gonna sum this up right now because you guys are just talking around now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the top ten, uh, top ten John Hughes movies based on AMC. Barker's Club's probably number one, right? Uh, most of the uh, first one, number eight, Home Alone. <laughs> Followed by. Yeah, but it doesn't go by that. It goes by our arguments. I know, but I'm just letting you know. Uh, number three, planes, trains, and people dropping microphones. Sorry. No, planes, trains, and automobiles, number three. Number three. And a close number two, Breakfast Club. What was number one? Where's number one, it's... actually. No, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, fuck. That's and, the and worst we, one. No, that is the worst John Hughes <laughs> movie. Like, that is awful. Oh, I don't like it either. It's just not a good movie. It's just I actually do movie. like that movie. It's, it's a fun funny. movie to watch, but it's uh, definitely not what I'd consider better than not, any of the movies the, that you guys have mentioned. Yeah. So It's not better so than... So your list right. is bunk. This is a tough choice because, honestly, based on scoring, you guys all did pretty good, but there was one person that went a little bit ahead for me, and that was actually Jeff. So oh. Jeff is going to get the round. Uh, because not only did he go into the plot points, he also told me various scenes that he enjoyed, but also what made the movie witty, what made it funny. You were a very close second, and you were just dancing. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we're at. So ding, ding, next one. All right. So television. 
If you could bring back one canceled show, which show would you bring back? And this was an interesting one. I actually liked all three of your picks, and one of them I didn't expect, which was yours. Right. Um, however, I'm gonna I'm gonna save yours for last this time. All right. Okay. I'm gonna so, go with Jeff. So Jeff, what was your pick? So my pick was Freaks and Geeks. Now this is a one season, one off basically. I just um, recently watched it on Netflix. It's actually it, very it's good. Fantastic. I was it's really shocked great. how good it was. Yeah. It's really good. Uh, this is one show I, I would bring back, even in the capacity where you you know if you did it now you couldn't have the same actors. Now, I no. thought about this. You know, no. you can't It'd be kind of hard to do that. It's impossible. Yeah. But we could, you know, they could recast them. I don't think any of them would go to movies at this point because they're all making pretty good change now. <laughs> oh, yeah. they're, all, they're all pretty good. Uh, most Rogan, of them. Anyway. James Franco, yeah. yeah, Linda Cardellini was just in Avengers. You know, yeah. you got some of the, you know, and they're all in their 30s. So there makes no sense to put these, you know, people back in high school. But what I think this show did so well was, you know, they, they set up a group of kids, much like The Breakfast Club, where you have... Freaks, which are the older kids in um, you know in high school that are kind of like the rebellious, badass, not really established. You got like the emo kind of kids. Yeah, you got the kids really, you know. You got the nerds. But the thing I, I really love about uh, the show is that it's set in 1980. So we really, again, like the Breakfast Club, where we get to see a different era of of you know teenage angst, teenage you know growth and. You know, the creators of the show could really I think go back. Chris and, and I are the only ones that probably even remember the 80s, uh, mostly because I think neither of you were. I remember it a little. Yeah. yeah, I know, but I got so, <clears throat> But I will say it is pretty pretty interestingly accurate. But the beautiful thing about this But they show, don't really stress it, though, which yeah. I also like. Like, they didn't, like, go out of their way to say, like, oh, here's that kid with the ghetto blaster, you know? It's oh, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they didn't exactly. really go that far about it. Well, yeah. they kind of did with Jason Siegel, where he was really into Rush, and he was yeah. a drummer, and they, they kind of... They, but they go a, a lot of ways with the, the show, which I really like, is that they incorporate music of the time to really put us in that era. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's really important in the plot devices that they could use. Now, if we were to make it today, I think you could make it set in 1890 instead of 1980. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and which I think would be very cool. You know, but again, like we, we could go into this hip hop, or we, you know, we, yep. we could delve into all, all you know, the Hammer time kind of era. Yeah. All right. Uh, and again, and then we got the geeks, which are about you know three or four years younger, just coming into high school. So you got the yeah. ones. Just you got the exiting, high. and then you got the coming in. Yeah. Coming in, and that show can be longer than one season. You know, you can. Oh, you, it could you, have easily went longer. It could. It could have went one, two, three seasons. But the 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 setup of the show was fantastic. And the fact that it only got one season kind of let it down as far as how great it could have been. I mean, even if the show was three seasons, I think it would have been a real tremendous, um, you know, show of all time. You know, just, the, you know, people still rave about it. So people still want to watch the show. And there's only, what, like 18 episodes or something? Yeah, and, 16 or 18, yeah. And each, They're all on Netflix, though. You each episode is really good. It's like its own little mini story of that era. And they do such a good job of... Really making you feel. For There's the actually characters. a show on right now. Um, it's got somebody's last name in it. I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's set in the '80s as well. It's the same idea, oh. but it just follows like a couple of the kids from the family. Okay. Uh, Coleman's or something like that, or right. I don't know. Some it, it's like a Jewish last oh, name. Oh, Goldberg's. Goldberg's. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, and I, actually, it's kind of interesting. It's the same I idea. I watched it. But it's actually I, not bad. I heard it's very yeah. similar. All right, excellent. Next up, Chris. the Seymour. And okay, what do you right. have for us? You know what? I'm going to choose Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> that was actually not a bad show. I Did you enjoy. guys ever watch Chuck? I enjoyed it. What, oh, is, what is Chuck? Okay, Chuck is is like a, a spy. A geek squad guy. Is a geek squad guy. It's like a spy romantic comedy. It's like, But he's like a guy that works for like a Best Buy kind of thing, and he works for like geek squad version it's, of that. Yeah, it's not because... But, but that's you know not what, what it's about. It's not, it's not one thing Jeff. in particular that makes it so Jeff. good. <laughs> it's not one thing in particular that makes the show great. It's like the many little elements of the show. Um, like, they combine to, to... What? Okay. They combine to make a masterpiece of a show. Uh, uh, um, it unfortunately never received the viewership, which is why I think it should come back. How many seasons did it go, though? It went, it went three, a while. It went, it went three seasons. Yeah, it, it did went three right. seasons. And it's only because... The only reason it went three seasons is because viewers kept writing in. Yeah. And saying, yeah, like... Yeah, they kept demanding it continue, like, yeah. Continue, continue, yeah, continue. It actually had a and really good following. You know what? Okay, this show... I don't even need my notes. All right. This show is all about... He's Chuck. going no notes now. He's Chuck. going naked notes. Okay. He got... 
the intercept in his head. Okay, Chuck is this like guy who works at a Best Buy. He works at a Best Buy. Like it's it's basically a Best Buy. Yeah, it's same idea. It's obviously yeah, same it's called idea. something else, but but there's something called the intercept, and he gets all this downloaded into his head. So he has all these government files in his head, and all these people are trying to get the intercept from Chuck. It's kind of like that Keanu mo- uh, Greaves movie. It sounds like the most but, boring fucking but, movie but or Chuck, show or ever. But Chuck, at first, at first Chuck doesn't even Johnny understand. Johnny Mnemonic. It's kind of like that, but not Chuck, as futuristic. Chuck doesn't even understand that he has the Intercept. He yeah. doesn't even What's understand. the Intercept? The Intercept is like all, all of the government files in the world. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he knows about these. And that means when he sees people on the streets, like, he can be like, ooh, wow, I see you. Like... He's just a normal guy, okay? He's a normal guy like you and me. <laughs> but, but he walks around and like, let's there's, say... There's that passion. Okay, yeah. let's, it's coming. Let's, let's say I see Jody and Jody's like fucking ripped off the Russia for some reason. All, that sounds all, like something I'd do. All of a sudden I'd be like... I, Jody ripped off Russia. <laughs> and Chuck would know that. He would just know that. And then he has this... He doesn't know why he knows that, but he knows it. He doesn't know why he knows it because he has the intercept in his head. And there's people after him to get the intercept. Sounds like a lazy plot device it, for writers. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's like not. Superman. And, okay, there's this chick in there called... <laughs> Jeff's like, right. I wonder, if I, I wonder there's, why I've there's, seen this. There's this, there's this chick in the movie. Uh, Sarah Walker is her name yeah. in the movie. But Yvonne Stravonsky... You're talking about a TV name. show, by the way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yvonne Stravonsky... Have another her, beer. It's her real name, <laughs> yeah. right? She is the most sexiest girl in the world. This is true. I'm going to give you a point for that. You know what? She is the most sexiest girl she's, in the world. She is pretty like, hot. She is like... She's pretty oh, hot. man. Damon, get a picture of her. And, you know what? <laughs> by the end of we the need third, a picture now. <laughs> by, the, by the end of the third season, Chuck, this fucking geeky guy working at the Best Buy, actually gets her. Yeah. The show went three seasons? It went it three did. seasons because they, people started writing in and complaining. People actually started canceled. writing in and complaining. And they renewed it based on that. Oh, okay. uh, the chemistry Twice. between the leads, particularly Zach Levy and uh, uh, Yvonne, was reason enough to watch the show. Is this Eugene like, Levy's son? No, it's not Eugene. It's oh. not. No, it's not. Oh, okay. You know, this was a geek. Looks kind of like him, though. There's, yeah. a, there's that show called The Schmitz or something like that. I forget. There's Eugene Levy's son's on. You know what? Oh, this this show is like a hilarious blend of... It's like comedy. It's action. It's it's drama at the same time. Like this show has it all. This is not a drama show. This is not a comedy. This is not an action show. It's got everything. Oh, I, I can't believe it. Derek all right. It's audience. <laughs> In my hey, own, it went three seasons. Like, in, in one word, to sum it up, amazing. I know it was on City. How the creators came up with this, this idea, I'll never know, but it's great. It's it's totally unique. It's not like anything else that's on TV right now. Wrap it up. Like There's there's nothing like this on TV right now. I All can't right. why. All right. <laughs> Dave, let's hear it, because this is going to be the most interesting one of the bunch, I think. <laughs> Yeah, like this Enterprise? One, like, what no. did you fucking pick? He didn't pick Enterprise because I know how much you guys have a hate on let for that. Me, let me preface this, guys. <laughs> 1,000 years ago, superstition and the sword rules. <laughs> He's, getting a point. He's getting a point just for that. <laughs> I picked Gargoyles. Oh, the, 1990, the, the 1994 Disney animated drama. It was a drama. It was a drama. It was a drama. It, 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 Disney made a drama. It was a great all. cartoon about these creatures, the gargoyles. Okay, you should get an axe. He chose a cartoon. Why? Why? It's a TV show. It's legit. You, and, and of all these, you can actually bring back gargoyles because it's all voice actors. Keith <laughs> David played Goliath, the lead gargoyle, no, about this clan from Scotland who are betrayed by, these, by the humans they were sworn to protect, and they get frozen in stone <laughs> by a magic spell for a thousand years. Until they're brought up to this castle. The castle has to be lifted above the, the clouds in New York City and by Xanatos, who's voiced by Jonathan Frakes. And the you're screwed. He's doing hand gestures now. Like, you're screwed. He's, <laughs> you know, my show was more relevant. He's just saying, Yours like, is it's, like, up, it's up in the. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever watch that. It's like jazz. What do you mean? This show was fantastic. <laughs> how many, show, how many uh, years did it go? It went for three seasons. Plus, it had, I think, a year of like this thing called the Goliath Chronicles, which was kind of like a spin off kind of a thing. 
Uh, it, it had amazing voice actors, including, as I already mentioned, Keith David, Jonathan Frakes from Star Trek. Yep. It had Marina Sirtis from Star Trek. It had as actually well. a lot of TNG. T- tons of TNG and classic right. Star Trek. It had Brent Spiner. It had Nichelle Nichols. Michael Dorn, right? It had Michael Dorn, Michael Dorn was who was Cold Stone. So this this clan they get brought they get brought up a thousand years later to the 1990s New York City, and they become the protectors of Manhattan, and they have to fight all kinds of supernatural and scientific. But threats. they can only do it during the night. They can only it, it, during the day. They look like stone statues, and at night they they become alive. You know, now here in Manhattan, the spell is broken, and we live again. <laughs> yeah, but dude, you, 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 was if we're bringing back a show, we got to bring back a show dun, people want to watch. Dun, was dun, dun, was dun, dun, canceled? Dun, 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 I'm sorry? Was Gargoyles canceled, or did it end? Well, and technically, the last, technically, every single one of your guys' shows were actually canceled. Technically, Gargoyles was canceled, but what's great about it, it was, it was. Like However, a, it went through its whole run, and it was chose not to be. It related, was an after school. I look at that differently, though. Like, if you can debate it, I'm I think willing it was to hear it. A really different show for Disney because Disney, you know, is always making all this happy stuff, and then it was at the time. At it the, definitely wasn't a happy show. At the time, this was an after school show that spoke to my particular age group, which was about ten to twelve years old. Right in the early '90s. Be honest, it still speaks to you. <laughs> it still does. It still holds up. I have it on DVD. It is a fantastic. I can't believe that. <laughs> fucking <laughs> show. It is. It, it like it like it, when we were watching like Darkwing Duck, Goof Troop. Just because they have it on DVD, that that's not a point. No, I didn't give them the point. <laughs> that they were able to bring up the show on DVD like 15 years later. Chuck is on DVD. Yeah. Chuck is on Freaks DVD. Chuck is, Chuck is on, on Netflix. Too. Chuck is on like everything. Whatever. I think Gargoyles is on Netflix Gar- as well, though. Gargoyles was a show that spoke to kids in an intelligent way. Didn't go too over their heads, but it was not like goofy and campy. It was serious. It was in a real serious world. They have conventions every year where people go just to celebrate this show. Like, all over the world. Yeah, but let's be honest. There's probably conventions for the other two as well. Yeah. Like, let's be honest oh, here. People, There's a convention for almost everything nowadays. Are, yeah, well, freaks and geeks, I'm right. not going to give you a point for that. Dodie... My final point for Chuck is... I'm not done. Podcast. I'm still making my case. Sarah Walker. I let, I let you go on about your silly Geek Squad show. I'm going to give you about another 20 seconds. Gargoyles had so much fantastic drama, characters, arcs. It, it, it went, And it worked with kids. It worked with kids, but also with adults. And it, it, the question is, what show could be brought back? What show should be brought back? This would be so easy to turn to turn over and, and reimagine or just continue the story on because all those actors are still alive um you know like that's all right that's what would make that show so what i want to hear so from chris and actually jeff because both of you are tied and both <laughs> of you are actually behind him right now so i need a little bit more from both of you neither one of you told me why it could be brought back he did so I want to hear why you think that it would. Well, actually, you kind of got kind of into it, a little bit. He was bit. kind of alluding to like it uh, was. It was more like, oh well, we can't do it. Well, we could Which, bring like a new bunch of kids. Oh, oh, but you said well, you could bring a '90s version, right? So I want to know if the 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 freaks and geeks, the way that we know it now, could that be brought back in your opinion? And if so, how do you think they could bring it back? Would the it be show, the same thing? The show or? with the same characters of the like the first characters movie. themselves. Obviously, the actors can't play them anymore. I don't think. Well, you could do that, but you could have them grown up. You, you can know. have them in the 90s now experiencing maybe um, yeah. university or something. There's, I'm not a writer on the show. I'm just saying that um, okay. I, I think that Freaks and Geeks could be a very good concept to bring back in you know a new set of characters. Or we could go visit these characters, see where they went in life. And you know it's still cool because it could be 25 years ago and you go, wow. You get, again, it's a, it's a look into the past. But now. You know, and that's what the show did really well for one season. And if you brought it back, I think the just the devices that they really uh, encapsulated. I also think that it's a show that I think it wasn't ready to be on TV, and I think yeah. I think that's what burned it. It, it just wasn't it wasn't there yet. It, it right. could have if they waited a little bit longer and kind of really nuked right. it out a bit because there was let's be honest there was a lot of doll scenes in that in that show okay i wouldn't say a lot of them like but a lot of them through the whole episode's run i'm not saying like okay. the entire episode was terrible because it wasn't it was actually quite good there but parts. there's a lot of kind of doll moments where you're kind of like well where's this going kind of thing sure and i think if they kind of fine-tuned it a little bit more it might have been a little bit bigger I don't yeah know. that's, well, I, that's I would, my opinion i would argue that no one wants to see gargoyles 
Like now. No, that's not true. Why would anyone? But why not? Well, why would anyone want to go revisit a, a cartoon that was popular that long ago? You know, like it's like kind of like you. Why that cartoon? Why why not any other cartoon? You know, I, I got plenty of reasons. That show had so many characters and rich history and fantastic but you voice say that acting. About any show right. at that time. I want to hear what Chris no. has to say. I don't so, have a lot to say. All right. All I got to say. Tell me why Chuck needs to come tell back. Tell me about computer gotta, brain. Or all I got to say, and I should get like 10 points for this. You can't use a girl. I already gave you one on a girl. Chuck is like Big Bang Theory versus CSI. This <laughs> this show. Which one are you going for here, though? That's no, what I it's know. Big Bang Theory versus CSI. This show is comedic. It's dramatic. It's romantic. So you're romantic. saying it's a mix of the two. It's a mix of the three. Okay, Big Bang Sounds Theory like it's a bad versus recipe. CSR. It's a, no, it's not a bad recipe. Dave, you're wrong because <laughs> you never watched the show. Jody, you watched the show, right? I did. That was an amazing show. I, I would did, say it was an amazing all, show, all of, but it was of, good. All of these, I, the, the, the premise, the thought of it is actually an original idea. It's not, it's not like another cop show. It's not like another friggin' drama. It's, not, it's, it's a friggin'... You know, Barbara comedy was an incredibly it's original comedy, idea. romantic, and drama yeah. there's, all there's at the same lots time. Of those types of shows. Okay. There's not lots of those types of shows. Name one it, other. Hey, you just said Name Big one Bang other. Theory. Yeah. Big, Big Theory is yeah. not a drama. <laughs> Big Bang Theory is not a drama. Big Bang Theory is not a drama. This is the only right. show that combines all orders together. Order. I have spoken. It's the only one that combines them all together. I'm giving this one to Dave. Yeah, right. Why would anyone want to yeah. watch the show today, though? That makes no sense. Right. <laughs> All right. You That's can't like be saying, biased. Like, we'll bring back the X Men cartoon. You know, like why? Gargoyles was even better than the X Men cartoon. But no, but why? I don't. No one, 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 no one watches cartoons anymore. They're not okay, popular anymore. All right. Yeah. Watch cartoons. All right. We'll go. So hopefully I'm not first time. Right. Yeah, no, I got it. Yeah, passion yeah. one. Yeah. I have passion for Chuck. Hey, shut up. All right. <laughs> All right, we're on to the next one. The next one is the music round, which traditionally Dave actually has done really well with. Damn right. So this is going to be an interesting one. He's going to have Dave, to hard, uh, right? uh, Jeff has won it a couple times as well. Uh, however, Dave is the reigning supreme one. I on this am the one god for sure. of music. So we'll see. Maybe this will push him forward. Who I knows? A rare, we'll see. I so wait, you're a rap god? I have different reasons for this one because I hate rap. That's fine, but it was hip hop or rap. So you can pick either. All right, so either way, guys, uh, the question is who was the best hip hop, rap artist, or group during the 80s or 90s? Or a combination of both, really. Could be either way. We are starting with the Seymour. My choice was Maestro Fresh Wes. Oh, fuck. Do you know him? Let your backbone slide. I, I do not. You do not know him. Let your backbone slide. Okay, his pioneering status and outstanding achievements has led him to being referred as the Canadian godfather of hip hop. It's true. Do you agree? Do Absolutely. You, agree? you know what? This guy is a Canadian godfather. What's his god, name? Maestro Fresh Wes. He uh, he opened for um, he opened for Classified <laughs> last year. He did. He did. You know what? This guy he opened for Classified last year. This guy is forty five years old now. This well, guy is forty five. Classified's not. Old. This guy not is also either. This but guy anyway. is also playing for the, at the Pan Am Games yep. this year. He is 100. percent And you oh, know that's what? that's a that's a something. He became the first, <laughs> the very first Canadian. Canadiana has to be part of our conversation, right? It he, doesn't have to be, but it's certainly he, I'm not going to argue against all it. Time. He, we don't he, have to go he, he is the first Canadian rapper to hit the top 40. That's true. very first. Who's it the second? There's, there's <laughs> no. You know what? No, actually, Bulma. there there Bulma. are there, there there are others like um there's there's Drake. Yep. Um there so there are That's others. A, yeah, Drake is huge. I just haven't figured out why yet. Uh, yeah, Drake is huge. I'm not saying I like Drake. I would listen to Maestro before I listen to Drake. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I like when I grew up in the 80s and 90s. Listen, I listened to heavy metal. Okay. Yes, you. I did. was a uh, friggin' you? Meta- I was like a friggin' Metallica, oh, yeah. Slayer, Anthrax. That was me. Okay. We went. We went to a bunch of shows too. Yeah. You and I. And went to- and in 1989, I was in grade seven. Okay. And we had a, this lip sync contest in my school. Oh God, this. Is we had this lip sync contest, and these these like Chinese kids. Did Maestro Fresh, Fresh West, Let Your Backbone Slide. That was the first time I ever heard that song. And I was like, hey, I don't have to be a metal guy. Hey, this is kind of cool. Right? And I was like, It was life-changing. It was, it was life-changing for me. This guy changed my life. Amen. He's the guy who... You're in grade 7 now. Have you had a moment like that yet? 
Is there a band that you heard and thought, "Wow, this is this is different than I've always listened to"? I really like the talent show at school. They do like uh, we've done talent shows before, but we haven't had anything like that. He'll do it. (laughs) He'll do it probably next year because I remember we did. Yeah, it's probably around that time range. Yeah. You know what I think? A lot of Canadian artists are like kind of complacent. They're like, "Okay, we're from Canada. We'll just stay in Canada." My show Fresh West was one of these artists who was like, "Okay, let's just knock their socks off. Let's knock the socks off the hip hop industry." What would I and know? What what has he done? Let your back You wouldn't know anything. The, oh, you because you were born in 1983, <laughs> Dave. You wouldn't know. 1983. But you it's all time. Like I should know something. Let your backbone slide. You don't know that song. So you're saying he's the best you rap should say artist it. of all time because he has one oh, to song. The like, it, it, it's not all time. To it's the rap. Right. Oh, 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 sorry. Of the eighties and nineties, he's the best because he has one song. The best. <laughs> he's the best because that one song propelled Canada into the hip hop industry. He's the one who. Like, he has been credited. If it, if it wasn't, he's called the Godfather. Of hip hop in Canada, we he's arguing, like the Voltron of hip hop in Canada. If we were arguing who's the best Canadian rapper of the eighties or nineties, I I bow down to you. It sounds like maybe he would be in the conversation. <laughs> All right, wrap it up. Is that it? Okay, good. All right, Dave, let's hear yours. I think Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, you're done. Yeah, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Face in your face. Yeah. Fight the power. <laughs> fight, fight, fight the power. I'm actually fucking shocked he knows that. <laughs> I'm fucking shocked he picked Public Enemy. <laughs> public Enemy is good. Don't though. believe the hype of Chris Seymour, whatever the fuck uh. I was going to say. It's, it's, all, it's all about Public Enemy. They were the most activist group of the 80s and the 90s. They, they had a, a message. They rallied a nation. Uh, or international group of black men uh, and also white people in all races who were uh, very tuned in with their with their message and their music about anti-establishment and and it was incredibly powerful like like there was the Beastie Boys and there was there was Public Enemy. The right? Beastie Boys were not hip hop. I'm surprised you they didn't were, pick, I'm surprised you didn't pick Beastie Boys. I would not because they're not hip hop. Yeah, the are. Beastie Boys yeah, are rappers. rappers. They're rappers. They're hip-hop. not. Look at look at what No Sleep Till Brooklyn. What? No, sleep to Brooklyn. That's a rock song, man. Yeah, but they have tons. They're they're rappers, dude. They rap. <laughs> they 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 rap. Like if you want to talk about Paul Revere and things like that, they rap. But they're not better than Maestro Fresh Rice in the hip hop era. <laughs> okay. They're not better. All right. Anyway, and we're on, Dave. What are you saying? Yeah, like come on, like you know, Beastie Boys may be a contender against Public Enemy, but I still think Public Enemy much more superior, much more accessible. Uh, uh, the first, by the way, just to let you know, sorry to interrupt you, Dave. Uh, according to Wikipedia, Beastie Boys were an American hip hop band from New York City. So they were hip hop, yeah, of course they're... they were definitely hip hop. Oh yeah, know. listen to Sabotage. Is that a hip hop song? Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. It's not a yeah. traditional hip hop song, but they are a hip hop band That's by why nature. They were right. revolutionary. But, yeah, they did a lot of interesting You're kind stuff. of like a... I'm All right. Like, either way. Okay. We're not, I'm not arguing Beastie Boys. I'm talking about Public Enemy. Even though Beastie Boys would have been a good pick. Yeah, I think so. I considered Beastie Boys, and I was like, no, I think Public Enemy much more... You probably would have won me a little bit over on that one, too. Yeah, like, I thought Between about the it, two, I like Beasties I, more, but I love Public Enemy. I like Public Enemy more. I actually like all three of your guys' pick, funny enough. And, uh, for, and for me, like, they... To, and I can honestly say that I have a CD of all three of these in my When I think of rap music, especially particularly in the late 80s, early 90s, I think Public Enemy. I think that they are the most associated with that era. And I rest my case. All right. First of all, you know what? what? Shit okay, what, what, what? He's <laughs> fucking bullshitting you. You know, he might know one song. I'm good at detecting he, it, by the he way. He knows one, you know, he knows his guy, but he had one song. My guy was revolutionary. I picked Tupac Shakur. I mean, if we're going to go with the best of all time, that time, 80s. Now, to be clear, we're not talking the Machiavelli stuff. We're only talking the Tupac stuff, right? We're not talking what? We're not talking the Machiavelli stuff that he did. Oh, I'm talking. By the way, we're talking the whole thing? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. I I count it. All right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I I consider that some of his best work. Uh, I mean, you might disagree, but. I think that's debatable, but anyway. um, uh, Who'd you say? Tupac Shakur? Oh, man, no, who's heard of him? He's <laughs> That's a nobody. <laughs> Tupac is one of these guys where he grew up in basically uh, very uh, different selects parts of the United States. He got to see poverty, 
growing up in all sorts of different locations. He grew up in New York, Baltimore, Oakland. Yep. He got to really see where the black community was coming from, and he, you know, he, he went and trained. Uh, you know, he was in a, an art school in ba- Baltimore. He learned ballet. He learned poetry. He really, um, he was incarcerated at a young age. He, you know, he really understood how to put his thoughts together. And then he broke out. Once he got out of prison, he became an insanely good recording artist. And he was able to do things that most rappers and hip hop artists couldn't do, which was really delve into all sorts of different type of songs. He could do a hate song. He could do a love song. He could, you know, he, he had the ability to just draw you into his music and really listen to him. And not only from the you know, political messages, he had a message from the heart, messages from really just where you know black the black community in America was. But you didn't have to be black to um, appreciate what he was saying, and I think that's very important from who he was, you know, and <clears throat> what he was trying to say as a, as a musical artist. Um, I can count more than ten songs that were fantastic and everybody knows them that knows rap hip-hop music mm-hmm. these guys they're kind of especially chris's but they're one-offs they're like they're they have one great song that you remember and you go yeah i love that song i wouldn't consider public enemy a one-off though no public enemy i'm saying it might be a one-off that, to him that's what i'm but saying. it's Absolutely. not a one-off by I, any means I, I, fair enough but i would just say tupac's overall um, impact is way greater than Public Enemy as far as rappers or hip hop. He he defined him and Biggie defined it in the '90s. It was those two guys that really catapulted that that type of music into the mainstream, and everyone started to really listen. You know, my rebuttal will be like, where are those guys now? And they, they were Tupac was murdered. Well, Tupac's dead. <laughs> I know that's the whole thing. And Mike Schultz Fresh West is playing at the Pan Am Games. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of something. All right, I'm giving him one just because that's that was funny. And, and Dave. All uh, right. Public Enemy is not playing at the Pan Am Public Games. Public Enemy is not. Right. But if you have to consider what Flavor okay. Flav has been since then, he's been a freaking reality TV to, show To star. be fair, I want to give Jeff a couple more seconds. Um, so if you have anything else to say, feel yeah, free. Yeah, I would just say like, you know, we, we could go into the Machiavelli stuff. I, I want to mention that real quick because he, right at the end of his life, before he was murdered, he was starting to transition himself into a new artist. And I think that's really important. That you you guys are kind of one notes where they, they are who they are, which is great. But Tupac was was starting to go a different way. He was evolving his He music. was evolving yeah. as, mu- as a musician, basically. A My show is still, re- still releasing new albums. That's fine. I'm not debating well, whether Well, Tupac or not probably still would be. Yeah, tu- Tupac. He's released, dead though. He released more albums dead than he did alive. You know, this guy well, had, had so ton- much in the He had bank. tons of stuff just done that yeah. weren't released, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, d- of that era, no one encapsulates that era more than Tupac. One, because he did die. You know, that the 80s and 90s almost belongs to him and Biggie way more than it belongs to uh, almost any other artist. If I were over Public Enemy, I would pick N.W.A. over over um, Public Enemy to, to really describe what Dave was trying to get at, which was uh, someone who's a group that was really. I think uh, both of them were influenced, but slightly different influence. Like, sorry, Jeff, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't introduce this era of kids to gang-related violence and shootings, and is which is why these all got. Which is why these guys all died. And I'm like, my and if you actually to, were debating the NWA, I would have just gave him a point for that. Because N- N- that was a good rebuttal. But NWA, there's like Ice Cube still alive, Dr. Dre still alive. Yeah, yeah but like, yeah, easy, easy. Only one. Listen, yeah. it's not my guy who lived. My show, sure Fresh West, is is like a good guy. He's not. Like All right. I, I hate the hip hop era. All right, I need to settle this because fighting. we gotta keep going. All right, so everyone's always fighting hey, and hey, fucking Voltron. Settle down. All right. Clearly, there's one person way ahead right now. So what I need from you two to try to make it up because Jeff is clearly in the lead here. Um, I want you to name three songs that we would know that Maestro did. Other than let your backbone slide. Little repetitive and. And we're done. Okay, so yeah. you... I, I don't even have notes, and I can tell you, fight the oh, power... can't repress the cause. That's true. That fight the sense. don't fight the power, don't believe the hype, and back in black. 
I'm still gonna give it to Tupac. <laughs> Neither one of you really have given it to me like like I fucking know that. Like yes, you knew that off the top of your head. However, two of those were actual singles or albums. So either way, you could have won that one. Just what by shirt looking. is John Connor wearing in T2? Public Enemy, black with a white logo on it. That's right. I win. No, Tupac don't. was in movies. <laughs> Tupac was in a lot of movies. He was in actually. Janet Jackson movies. I'm giving that one to Jeff. Yeah, I gotta win the next couple rounds. You gotta try anyway. And I thought you were gonna get out there with this. <laughs> What's that? I thought you were gonna get out with this. <laughs> no, it's just it. I th- he got he got stuck on the Canada thing, and yeah, that was yeah. the thing that burned him the yeah, most. Like, probably. Is this a Canadian specific question? If it was Canadian specific, he would have fucking won in heartbeat. I, I expected but... you to pick Beastie Boys. All right. Day. Either way, guys, we're only halfway through, and honestly, I still think it's anybody's game. Okay, uh, Jeff obviously is in the lead right now with one extra point. Just to recap, and Dave has a point, so we have Jeff with two points, Dave with one point. And Chris with nothing, but I have a feeling he might get some. Three rounds to go. He's got some very interesting answers for the next three, which I think are going to be a lot more interesting. Plus, I also know from the last time I was with him, uh, he is gets more compassionate as time goes as on. As the beers flow in. As the beers yeah, flow into him. Why do We're I on to sports. So much? Got nothing. What? Why do I suck so much? We're on to sports. Okay. If you could ban one Olympic event, whether it be winter or summer Olympics, which would you ban? I'm up, right? Dave's up. I picked shooting. Shooting. Now, yeah. let's explain like this to people. Like no, when they shoot, oh, just shoot targets. Oh, like with guns. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. With guns. So Basically, it's a shooting range. I didn't even know that was one. It <laughs> is, yeah. And this is why I'm going to win. I checked all three of yours because, honestly, I didn't even know what yours was. <laughs> I understood the words. I just didn't understand in that order. Yep. But anyway, so anyway, go on. It's ridiculous. How can this be an Olympic sport? An Olympic sport is about athleticism. This is shooting guns. You ought as well make video games a friggin' uh, Olympic sport. I love that. Hey, that's coming. <laughs> that's it coming. could be, sadly. <laughs> oh, who can like press buttons faster? Who can pull a trigger? Like this is marksmanship. It 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 has a place in the pantheon of competition. So now, well, I will. A little bit of a disclosure here, though. I have shot guns, and I have shot guns at targets, and it does take skill. Okay. However. To get back to your point, though, it's not an athletic skill. I'm a fat guy. I'm not discounting that. It and has, I'm good at it. I'm not discounting that it's a skill. It is, but it's that, definitely a skill. Is darts an Olympic sport? No. No. Okay. Well, to be honest, we'll make it darts. Why? Darts to me is even more because at least you're throwing something. <laughs> okay. Like, or how about um, horseshoes? Or, uh, or 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 knife throwing? Or like, lawn darts? I think we should have our own Olympic <laughs> events. Lawn bowling is that one? Lawn bowling, lawn bowling is one. It is, is one. Oh. Well, it's, it's a Commonwealth sport. I don't it's know. a Commonwealth sport, okay. yeah. It's not actually an it's Olympic, not Olympic sport. sport. Yeah. Okay. Lawn bowling actually takes skill, though. At, at least you move your arms and oh, stuff no, and like, your body. So you and, know what? It, so it's pointed. Shooting does take skill. It takes skill. Absolutely takes skill. So but it does, take skill. But I'll tell you right now, it does not take much in the ways of athleticism. You have to breathe. That's the most you important. have to breathe. You have to breathe right. At least in yeah. biathlon, you have to ski and then shoot. Yep. Okay, I can accept a little bit different. Yeah. I can ex- I can accept that as an Olympic sport. This is not a sport. It's a lot harder to so you can already to do accept a down the range. fact that they're shooting as the sport. No, the skiing part oh. is the sport. But, but that's already in the shooting is very. As if much they had to, if they had, the... if they had to run a marathon and then shoot, okay, maybe. But they don't. They don't have to do any kind of cardio whatsoever. But Dave, like, well, focus, cardio to a degree is they important. they, they consider hunting breathe. a sport. Hunting, like hunting animals. That's a sport. Oh, do you want to make that an Olympic sport? No, I don't want to make that an Olympic sport. <laughs> we already sport. have that. We just used targets. The question saying, is about Olympics. It's clear. I know. Whoa, I'm saying, settle down. You were saying that shooting is not a sport. But shooting, like, is shooting animals a sport? I guess. It's like, it's like shooting moose a sport? Some people I don't do consider it a sport, but some people some do. Some people would say Some so. people do. They All do right. consider that a Close sport. Close it up, Dave. So shooting could hey, be a sport. Hey, you made the point. Shut up. All right. I, I, I think I've, I've summed up my points. Like, you might as well make knife throwing and uh, darts uh, sports as well. You know what they not. should put in there? Axe throwing. I wouldn't be surprised. Axe throwing probably. That would be an awesome sport. That is more athletic than, sh- than pulling a trigger. 
This is true. All okay, right. and that's why it should be banned as a sport. Perfect. All right. Olympic Let's move sport. on to Jeff. Okay. Jeff, what did you pick? I picked equestrian dressage, according, <laughs> dressage. To, according to Chris. All right, so okay. let's, oh. let's explain, because I'll tell you right now, most you, people you don't took, know what the hell that is. You took mine, by the way. <laughs> he didn't take yours. He got it in first. All that's right. how the rules work. You, you, you didn't get, get it back. in. <laughs> Jeff was but Mr. I was Speedy, talking. and I will tell you guys... I actually had to look at the logs in Facebook chat because both you guys came in at almost the same time. You came in four seconds before you. <laughs> four seconds. Amazing. Because I, I, I went back and I kind of re-looked at my answers to see if I was... No, seriously. Everything. You both almost blinked at the exact same time and I'm like, oh, shit. So then I look at it. I look at Chris's and I'm like, all right. And he's got all the questions. And then I'm like, okay, well, give me a second. I got to check. And then I looked at yours and then I looked at the timestamp and I'm like, Holy shit, he beat him by like four seconds. <laughs> and you had two of the answers that he had. <laughs> okay, so... Anyway, go on. Equestrian dressage is... Um, it's, it's basically... It's training a horse and showing it off for people in an arena. It's a dog show with horses. <laughs> it's exactly, That's really what it is. Why isn't dog show an Olympic sport? It's exactly <laughs> it should it be, damn it. It's, it. it's the horse should get the fucking medal, not... The person. Drunk sports. Yeah. That should be a sport. I think they do give the medal to the horse. You yeah. know why you're wrong, Jeff? I know. They give the you're, medal you're, you're, does it, but you're totally sports. wrong because oh, the, 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 he's the, coming. The people, <laughs> the guys that are riding the horse actually have to train them to do that. Do you think these horses that's actually pure wet by themselves? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. What do you think they walk backwards by said. themselves? No, that's not what I said. I He's said, jumping in there right now. I eh? said that the the sport is it's training a horse. So it's yes, it is. That is exactly what he yes. said. And it, it basically there's different uh, stages of showing off what you can do with the horse, like right. galloping or like um, that's physical though. You're trying to you have to teach the horse. Yeah, but what, that's not a sport, Eamon. Like this is this is like it's a, it's a freaking dog show is what it is. It's, I know, like, but at least it's something that you have to do. Whereas in- you have to train this horse, like uh, Jeff, could you uh, j- could you actually jump on a horse yourself and get this horse to pirouette? I don't or think, walk back. I could. I don't or think walk back. Judge who could does you, it better. Could you, get, <laughs> you know, like, could you get this horse to walk backwards for you? I, I can honestly say I've never gotten a horse to walk backwards this, for me. The thing is with this event, all these people can do all these tricks that you're saying. Yeah. And people go, eh, that was a 10 the way he did that. Ah, oh, that was a, a 6. He, you know, that, that horse didn't quite back up right. This is what this event is. It makes no sense. It, it does not belong. All right, I want to give I want to give Jeff a couple more seconds to say anything else he needs without being interrupted. All Shut right. up! All it's right, just, just because you kind of attacked it, I mean, right. you didn't have a full time there. It just makes no sense. It's 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 training. It's that's not that's that defeats the purpose of the Olympics. It's like watching someone figure skate, but it's their training, you know, or someone coaching. Like, and then we rate the coach or how well that coach. Coach that figure skater? That's freaking ridiculous. Like, no, it's not the same because those listen to this. If you're trying to teach a horse to back up and pirouette, listen, how many times have you fallen on your back because you're trying to train this horse? Then this horse fucking throws you off because this So your horse, entire this argument this is This horse is like fucking Because you get thrown off of a horse, that makes it an Olympic sport. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm just saying that this horse All right. fucking throws you off. So just to reiterate, I just want to let everybody know right now, based on what he's done, he already has two points, and he hasn't even said his argument. What is his answer? Huh? Well, he's going to tell us right now. All right, let's hear it. Okay, my, my choice for the worst Olympic sport is men's beach volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Not women's, clearly men's. Okay, because... Okay, think about the women's is okay. Honestly, the women's is okay. Think about this. <laughs> we all like this, okay? All of us here like women's beach volleyball. We all like it, okay? There's women in bikinis. I, in fact, when we were asking uh, best Olympic sport a few weeks ago, <laughs> yeah. I, I almost argued beach volleyball and specifically women's beach, vo- beach volleyball. You did actually, yeah. I I, but I ended up switching it. But um, yeah, like that's. Okay, go on. Like, Whatever. women's be- beach volleyball is awesome. But men's beach vo- volleyball is stupid. Like, they were... Okay. 
Women's beach ball, bo- beach are volleyball. Saying, are you saying that the difference is the sex appeal? Yes, the difference is the sex appeal. The reason that women's beach. So we're not using the athletic angle yeah, at all. No, here. no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no right, athletic well, let's angle. Hear hey, there's no athletic angle. Women's beach volleyball. The reason that people watch it is because men are wanting to see women in bikinis. They are not watching because they want to see the um, athletic value. Now, men's beach volleyball oh, I'm sure is men do, but anyway. who wear full-size shorts. They wear T-shirts. It's not like they're... They don't have the sex appeal. There definitely is a difference between the outfits between the two events. What if, yeah, what if, what if you're gay? The Olympics isn't all about sex appeal, though. It's a, wants no! To watch it. You know, but like, it's about athleticism. The Olympics is not about sex appeal. That's, but the only reason well, people watch... Sex appeal is not what the Olympics is supposed to be for. If you... But it would have made much better to just argue beach volleyball in general because it's not really athletic. Well, the, yes. the girls. No, no. no but he, this, the, now, just to reiterate, the listen. question is what would you ban? Would you and mean? he has a valid point. Listen. He wants to ban this. Listen. I'm beach, listening. Men's beach volleyball is a sport that you play on vacation. Like this is right? this is something you do when you're in Cuba. Do you remember this is something like, you do when you're in Mexico. This is Tom, something you do. Top Gun. Remember Tom Cruise yes. and Goose? Yes. They were there. And, okay. The only... The only... You can be my wingman anytime. The only teams that actually have a chance is USA, Brasilia, and Australia. And the only reason they have a chance is because these are the only countries that actually have the free time and the beachfront property <laughs> to actually do this sport. Are you kidding me? Free time and beaches. No, there's not. Yeah, it's called Africa. Canada has. Yeah, Canada has there's a beach over there. I saw the plane. Any, any country. Yes, European but is, is Canada over there playing beach volleyball, getting our Olympic fucking volleyball team ready? We have no. A team. We, they're Canada, not doing it. Canada has a team. Okay, not only that, they don't even play on the beach. They play in a friggin' arena where they bring in sand. That's right. It's outdoors. It's outdoors, but, but they bring in sand. About the men, so like, like the women, all these things are okay. The women are okay <laughs> because we are all men and we love watching but women's if you, volleyball. If you already, we do, we do not want that to go away. If you already, if he wins enough. this category, it's only on passion. I'm <laughs> telling you right now, <laughs> we do not want women's volleyball, women's beach volleyball to go away. We love women's. So beach other volleyball. than the sex appeal. Yeah. Is there one thing that's different between the men's and the women's that you think that the men's is just not worth it being there anymore? Because the men's... Don't okay. say sex appeal, though. I need something else. It's not sex appeal. Listen, the men don't watch men's volleyball, beach volleyball. Gay men do. They don't care. Gay men do. They don't care. They don't care. The women, the women actually, don't, actually don't watch it because, you know, even if these guys were wearing Speedos... Okay, and their dicks were sticking out. They wouldn't care because women don't care about that kind of shit. Only men care about that. <laughs> men care about that. So are men you care about that. Men sexist? care about seeing boobs. Are you calling men women sexist? don't care about seeing boobs. Okay, all right, I'm calling it. I'm done because honestly, I just don't want to fucking hear it anymore. I'm gonna give it to him. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him men's beach volleyball. Oh, no. who would you give it to? I would have given it to. I think I would agree with him. He had made a good point that it's not a sport. Shooting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've been the, robbed. The, 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 well, you can call Game bullshit if you want, but I don't care. So basically, you know, I'm giving like Chris that one. All right, I went around. Can I just put like a point, not to be a great favor, but my sport is the one. Of the, I think it's the only Olympic sport that is mixed gender. So only like, it is mixed gender. Men yeah. or women. That's because women. neither one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's yeah. exactly right. That's exactly because there's no athletic value to it at all. <laughs> exactly. Par- Paris figure skating is mixed gender. By no, the way, no, 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 no. That's different though. That's that's where you're having. Paris. But there is athletics uh, that, involved no, in no, that. No, I'm one. saying like it's an event where men or women can win it. Like uh, you know, like, like the, the same. Thing. All right. Yeah. Either way, let's go to the history mm-hmm. question, which is traditionally probably the well, longest wait, question my, for us. My first choice was. Uh, um, a question and massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, fuck it. Well, I'm going to make sure I write something about that so I can fuck him up. <laughs> and he actually got some points on you, too, which is pretty good. Where uh, I don't understand how shooting wasn't in the conversation. Because you didn't keep going with it. You said Speaking the same thing shooting, over and over again. History question. 
Yeah. All right. Anyway, the history question. Which country could trigger the next world war oh, and boy. how? I did specifically put and how. Oh, because my, saying my, it, saying the top three, which is basically what you guys have done, Russia, um, isn't going to win it. All right. It's how is this going to happen? All right. Okay. So that's where we're at on Actually, this one. I don't need my All right. this. So anyway, I think Dave went last. So I think uh, you're next up there, Jeff. Oh, all right, well, I'd pick the most obvious one. Let's face it, North Korea. I wouldn't say it's the most obvious, but it is in the top. Anyway, oh, come on. Sure. Which country is the most insane oh, country? Wait till I get to mine. It's not. It's, yeah. ne- it's neither of yours. North Korea is the most insane country for this reason. They have, one, they have nuclear weapons. Two, they have an insane dictator. Can I remind already? Yeah, man, no? they, nah, give him a minute. They have a million man army that, you know, is basically brainwashed to the leader's whim. That It's not their fault, but it's the case there, so they are dangerous. They are basically a communist regime, um, you know, comparable to uh, a Stalinistic Russia, which is very scary. But with nukes and with a lot to prove, because let's face it, the, the leader, uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, it doesn't have the best self-esteem, let's face it. They he already got blown up in the movie The Interview, so don't worry, he's fine. <laughs> he's Which done. Was done. Was and, and, and how did he, he made fun of. And how did he Does react that make to him that? better? How did he react to that? He actually terrorized people. Yeah, he was pissed off, and he hacked Sony, and he, you know... No, you know, no, you, you, you are speculating that he hacked Sony. Yeah, that you was don't never know proven. That. Is that, That's whatever. not proven. Let's but it. there's a very good chance. Let's face <laughs> it. He was pissed off, and he was not happy, because he didn't want that movie... Uh, and that propaganda in his country. This guy, if anything is going to happen as far as a world war, is something's going to happen in the North Korea where people get wind that he is not a god. He is not a man that can climb mountains or, you know, pease gold or whatever the hell they come up with. This guy is, once the, 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 the country, the nation is able to turn on him, it's going to get scary because he has so much capabilities and power with nuclear weapons and a, a very large army that once that happens, he's going to go nuts. And then we're going to be uh, into a, uh, forced into a situation where if he nukes a country like uh, Japan, who they hate, then it's 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 you know it's, it's World War Three, and you know we're going. To war. Seems like Asia War Three. America has a treaty. They have they have. Um, Just going America military. will get involved no matter what. They Just military. going down. They right, military we'll see. there. Um, they're the scariest country out there by far. I mean, uh, if we're going to talk about um, just overall irrational, uh, irration, irrational thought, irrational behavior, it's going to come from North Korea. The other countries at least are willing to discuss and talk to, uh, you know, as far as I'm guessing you guys probably pick countries like Russia or China. Um, and Well, we didn't. <laughs> well, man, I don't know. Oh, how you know. I want to this. Well, we'll see. All right. Um, Sum and, it up. And so, just overall, North Korea, they're the scariest because of their capabilities, their leader, and what could happen if their nation is able to turn against them. And once that occurs, or if it doesn't occur, even if you know he gets, just gets pissed off in general, like like, like to, uh, <clears throat> to the fact that a movie can piss them off so much. What if? The you know uh, what if the, something bigger happens? What if something bigger yeah. happens with the CIA tries to infiltrate and then he catches them? Something like that occurs. Uh, Bad news. All if right. he hears this. All right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna I care about this. I'm sure he won't care about this. But the five people that listen to this will be fine. All right. Let's hear it from you, Chris. What was your pick? Uh, my pick was Israel. <laughs> <laughs> you should have just basically said the Middle East. Because no, no, I choose Israel. It specifically I'll, I'll said what it. country. The Middle East is not a country. Yeah. Uh, because Israel is actually mainly Jewish. Yep. Uh, they got a, mu- a lot of Muslims there. They do. And they're surrounded by uh, Islamic countries. Why do you keep on looking at me when you say that? Because he's, he's trying to teach you. I'm trying to teach you. Trying quiet, to teach you. So quiet up and listen to his answer. Listen uh, to the old man speak. <laughs> they're surrounded by like India, Pakistan. I may like, tie Syria, something, but sunny. Syria, like Turkey. There, There's... Iran, Iraq, there's a lot of countries over there. All right, let's let's focus on your argument. Surrounding Israel. He can learn on Wikipedia. Okay. The thing is, uh, the, the, the first thing I want to do is rebut Jeff. All right. Okay? Because there's no way that North Korea is going to start the Third World War. I mean... Why is that? The reason is, if, is, if North Korea ever decided to attack, let's say they ever decided to attack anybody, mm-hmm. every country in the world... Would just bomb his uh, North Korea. 
They would just be like, like fuck it. They're communists. Why? Do you understand China? who protects North Korea? Who? China. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're both communists. It happens to be Russia one of the biggest could, militaries in the Russia world. Russia could be a sympathizer, and I think the scariest thing is China. Russia, Here's the thing. Uh, uh, I, I, I disagree with you. Like, North Korea has no allies. They don't have China. allies. China. They're not... China is not... Okay, do you think if North Korea was going to bomb the world, do you think that China would ally with North Korea or the USA and Canada? They're the more USA likely to ally with North Korea. They are, actually. They're not. It depends They're who they not. attack and That would why. never happen. It depends on the reasons. If they were to attack China, yeah. They <laughs> I agree with you. But if they were to attack like a Japan over you know a certain reason, it all depends if it's CIA, like I if said. If they attack South well, Korea. Okay, well, all right, thing. let's let's hear your argument. Israel here. Okay, Israel attacked Syria last year. Right? Over um, a Chinese uh, over um, a death. Over a death of a teenage guy. Who's gonna attack Israel? There's lots of contenders. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to attack them to make it a world war? Doesn't matter. Hold on. <laughs> well, kind of does matter, but all right. Matter. Let's hear it. Talking about okay. All right. Syria. Wrap it up, Chris. Syria has been attacking Israel for years. Okay. So Syria Egypt, has been attacking Lebanon. And yes. So what I think is ISIS is going to move down into Iran. It's going to move down into Syria. It's going to start attacking Israel. That is going to start the, the world war. It's not going to be Korea. It's not going to be North Korea. Like, if you want the real, like, uh, my honest opinion, it's going to be Israel that starts the, the next world war. It's, it's going to be them because um, they have already taken out nine bases in Syria, which they think are strongholds. They've already taken them out uh, because they don't want Russia in there. They don't want the USA in there. They're going to start the war. And it's not going to be a war Who in... Who is? ISIS or Israel? No, Israel's going to start the war, but ISIS is going to come down from Iran and into, who's gonna, into saying, Syria. Who's allied with ISIS? Nobody's allied with ISIS. ISIS is, gonna, is just going to take over Syria because Syria does not have that strong a government. They're going to get wiped out by Israel. Israel has they're the strongest get wiped military out. in the world. Israel has the strongest military in the world. So that's why they're going to start the next world war. Okay, but it's going to end in like a month. It's know? not going to end. It's not going <laughs> to yeah, end. What will, happen, what will happen is because Israel has so many strong contacts. Israel is... All like, right. Related I'm gonna give you 20 Canada more seconds of them cutting you off. Okay, oh, sorry. Israel is. I'm getting so Canada excited. Dude. <laughs> Canada, US, Russia, China. Israel has so many friends, right? Israel has. Okay, go ahead. Israel has so many friends. Definitely. They, and, 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 like, they're just. They're gonna start the war because the war is going on over in the Middle East. It's not going on here. It's not going on in China. It's going on in the Middle East. It's gonna be Israel that starts the next world war. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> what was your pick, Dave? The next world war will be started by Russia. Russia. And the Cold War favorites. Indeed. Uh, you know, we thought they were friends for so many years. Then this whole uh, crisis. <laughs> he, he's going to set this up like a movie. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, and was. they thought they were friends. The sum of all the years. But then what happened? By the way, there's, there's, there's actually one thing I forgot to say. Can I say it first? Oh, go ahead. This is not a history question. This is a future question. Okay. No, it isn't. It's history. Thank you. That's a question? <laughs> we have to learn from our mistakes to not repeat them. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'll tell you why. This whole crisis last year with Crimea, where Russia basically annexed a whole section of Ukraine mm -hmm. and it violated a whole bunch of international treaties, created a lot of tension, was because... It, it, it obligated the United States and the United Kingdom to have to come in. Of course, they did not. Germany as well was obligated to help, and they all did not because why? Nuclear deterrent. And Russia and Vladimir Putin, a fucking insane dictator, said on the record that he was totally prepared to use nuclear weapons if it escalated. If there was international incursion to try to prevent the Crimean annex annexation, then he was prepared to use nuclear weapons over this piece of bullshit land. It's not bullshit to Russia. Not bullshit they to Russia. That land. There's a big good reason for it. Well, wow. no, and I agree. I agree with that. It, what what I mean is that you know, in the grand scheme of things, we're going to annihilate the entire world over 
not all that much. Right? To them, though, it's the supply chain of boats, of going through the Black Sea. There. But they already control a lot of the Black Sea. No, but they needed that part. They want, uh, for whatever reason, they, it's a bit very important for them to have that land. Right. And, and, and Russia is the true threat in the world today. And we are headed for another Cold War. And, and what was the Cold War? It was the threat of nuclear war and the true World War III, and we're back at it. And, and since Russia has, has expressed a, um, a willingness to use them openly on the record, they, to me, are the most credible threat for a, a next world war. And it's truly a world war. In these two cases, they would be regional wars. I don't think they're um. wars. North Korea, I think either one of them could be escalated North to Korea a World for war. the past like uh, ten years has been trying to I think out of all of them though, Russia would definitely be the easiest one to be a world war. Russia fires their nukes at US, US fires their nukes at Russia. And How then we have Matthew Broderick looking at the fucking screen playing chess. It's gonna be a nightmare. If it goes to nukes, <laughs> then it's a nuclear war. That's Which is a true war. world war. No, it's a nuclear war. Well, war, it's a world. Well, a threat of nuclear would be a world is, war anyway. The but. Jeff and that uh, and Dave have nuclear wars weapons in, but well, no. In, in Israel's case, there has been talk about Iran uh, nuking Israel, and and that's what this whole new deal with Iran has all been about. Trying to prevent Iran from uh, uh, amassing a nuclear stockpile. Iran. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you about twenty more seconds. Hey guys, in um, hey, you're not talking. It's not your twenty seconds. <laughs> hey. All right, I give you twenty more seconds. Hey guys. I think I think I, the, I, I gave you way longer. Just don't. Just, I wanted you to. Know I think that the most credible one because who in the other in these other cases they're going to be more gunfights. Okay, in my case, a nuclear war is extremely credible. The reason that that whole thing did not stop, the reason that no one backed up the Ukraine because they knew Russia was willing to take it to extreme measures, and they backed off. And next time, they may not be willing to, to do that. All right. It's going to push the world to the brink of annihilation. All right. So, by, the way, by the way, Jody. Yes, Chris. In the Bible, <laughs> yep. it says the end of the world <laughs> yep. will be at Jesus' birthplace, which is in Israel. Uh, that's good for them. It was so, also a strange story. And Jonas story. betrayed him, right? That's, so, that's how Jonas betrayed him. World War III will be, you know? <laughs> World War III definitely can't just be the end of the world. That's though. about Revelation. All right, all that's right. That's about Revelation. This is about lost. I'm going to ask a question to try, try to separate the herd a bit. Um, honestly, Chris, you don't have a pot to piss in. Um, <laughs> what? You really don't. All right, you made two good points, and one of them was against somebody else. I thought he was in the league. No. <laughs> so does that mean he's out? Oh, no, no. Uh, not at all. No, uh, not yet. No, you're not. You're not even close. All right. Get back here. Don't be a whiner. All right. All right. Either way, I still want to hear your answer. I'm going to let you pick one country that is going to get into it with the country that you picked. I want to know who it's going to be and how long do you think it's going to be for. All right. Before everybody gets involved. All right. So, you. You have to go first. Uh, I am going to pick South Korea. South Korea, why? South Korea is one of these countries that if they're poked, it's not going to be good for North Korea and vice versa. And I don't think it's going to take much for, and I mean, we have had a lot of peace there for, you know, well, I wouldn't say peace, but 60, 70 years that since the, DMZ, then, you know, yeah, like, since the end of the Korean War, which I, I will say, say about the Korean War, that that war... North Korea did not give up, they did not fail, they did not lose. That is why North Korea exists. Right. Um, with South Korea, if something were to occur, like. There's not going to be this long an answer, Jeff. No, I'm just trying <laughs> to. Just, I'll <laughs> cut him <laughs> off. I'm in charge, you're not. Uh, just trying to explain it. Um, with, if South Korea got into it with North Korea, then uh, it becomes a much bigger <laughs> issue. And that's why, it, it, I'm just saying that's where it would start. All that's right. the spark of it. And that's the oh, place where the, it, way, the and then it goes to Western powers. Myself. And then we see North Korea get backed up by Russia <laughs> and China. So then we got Russia, China, North Korea all together There's against the world. Yeah, and then we have a World War III. All right. All right. Who, who's going to start it with them? Who's going to start it with Israel? Who's Who, going to start What country is going to start a war with Israel? Is it Syria? Syria. Yeah, come on. They're right next to me. <laughs> Worst other. choice. What? All right. I don't even need to hear anymore. All right, keep going. What's yours? Iran's the most more credible one. Um, Syria's almost wiped out already. Yeah, who's going to get into it with Russia? NATO is going to get into it with Russia. NATO is a country. They, NATO is an alliance we, of countries. We just described uh, I said one country. 
The United States. All right. We just Go described ahead. Uh, how NATO backed down to Russia in that one per- in- instance. Uh, mm, good point. But that's how that's how wars begin. There's always a series of engagements, uh, conflicts that precipitate so the war. <laughs> the one, like the last one, sports. Basically. All right, the then. one with men's beach volleyball, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm shocked of. But you made a great point. <laughs> Even though it was absurd. <laughs> he made a good point. He made a good point. It's sorry, sorry, completely sexy. All right. Um, yeah, no, it's, well, that world wars, look at the history of the two world wars that, that predate. They were about alliances, right? Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. The whole world goes to war. Why? Because Austria-Hungary was allied with Germany and Italy. But I also against... think you can agree that every world war was started by two parties starting it. And then everybody got involved. True, because there are treaties and alliances, yep. and NATO is the North American Treaty Organization, yep. and treaty organizations are what bring multiple countries into a, a global conflict. Jeff made a very good point, though. They already backed down on that. So. Once. Yeah, but there's Once a, is again, enough. The, uh, the reason why I say that, too, is because there's a nuclear deterrent. Not that there isn't with North Korea. But I don't see All right. Russia as um, crazy as North Korea. North We're Korea not going any farther on the history Russia. because I want to be the guy. Jody, you know what? Just to clear me as the winner. Listen, Israel has a lot of Muslim countries around there, okay? This is like a Jewish country, Israel, surrounded by fucking Muslim countries. Where do you think the war is going to start? Honestly, you think it's going to start All because... Right. <laughs> I've made my choice. Jeff gets it. Oh. Okay. Man... So let's let's just uh, uh, but just to let the audience know, where Jeff is now at three, which means he's now finalized the spot into the speed round. There's no debate. This is just gravy if he gets this. This is just this is just uh, an extra fuck you if he gets this. <laughs> like that's really what it is. And I expect if Jeff does win this, I expect him to get up and just give you guys the finger <laughs> and go eat me, eat me, and point to your crotch. No, okay. By the way, you know, yeah. do Johnny, you'll see in my one. notes that I have many notes. For for a lot of things, yep. Like, but for Wait. my my last answer, actually, I I don't need any notes. No, because I know I'm gonna win. All right, well we're gonna see, and I and that's the confidence you need to bring. Because because right now because I don't need my notes. Chris and Chris and Dave are at one point apiece, which means if either one of you guys win this this round, you'll get to go to the speed round with Jeff, who's already solid. This time. All right, so our wild card question tonight, gentlemen, is what movie should be made into a series that hasn't already? So this is obviously we can't take a movie that's been moved. I go first. You can absolutely go first. I was actually going to ask you to go first. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, I picked the Alex Cross movies. All right. The what? Yeah, I know. You guys are like confused. I don't okay. even know what that, what that is. Okay. Well, he's going to explain it if you'd uh, shut right. up. <laughs> okay, uh, there's this character from books. His name is Alex Cross. He's a, a detective in Washington, D.C. Now, there's been three movies made about his character. One is called Kiss the Girls. One is called Along Came a Spider. And the last one was called... Uh, is Alex, Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman played yep. two of them. I forget who played them in the most recent movie. The most recent movie really sucked. But those first two movies were really good. So um, if this movie really sucked, why would you want it to be a TV show? I didn't. I'm not. Ooh. I, you know, that, that's the third. That's Ooh. not the third movie. He's, kind of He's bringing the game. It's not the third movie, and I'm not saying uh, it's not my favorite movie. Honestly, right now, Jeff doesn't care if he wins this one. <laughs> well, I just want to throw out um, why I picked it. Uh, right. I picked it because um, all right, there, there's tons of cop mystery dramas. Let's face it, there's tons of them. But this one I find very interesting. And Dave has all of them on his PBR. <laughs> but this one I find very interesting because um, of where it's set in Washington D.C., Baltimore area. Um, the yeah, name- like there's not enough shows on TV already about that. <laughs> He's really digging in today. <laughs> the, the, I'm liking it. The nature of, uh, of just the mystery. Jeff's not an easy guy to dig in though because he doesn't get upset. He just keeps going. <laughs> Basically, uh, just the what's really interesting is you delve into Ooh, the. I'll jump. the uh, uh, it's basically it's hunting down a psychopathic killer. That is basically what the premise of all three movies have been, um, and it's you know finding the crime scene. A lot of times, it's the 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 you know the killer goading our our protagonist um, Alex Cross. So uh, what we really get to. Um, understand is uh, his character is very interesting just to watch as far as an audience member goes. Uh, we get to, you know, uh, kind of like Silence of the Lambs where we get to analyze 
just how messed the up thought pattern, the thought pattern, how messed up the serial killer is. Sounds of the Lambs would have been a better choice for you. Well, uh, that would have been a great movie for, to be a TV show. It's, it's <laughs> maybe you should have picked it. <laughs> maybe very, I should have picked it's that. It's very similar. It's very similar. It's All right, let's, similar. let's and, wrap it up, and, Jeff. And Chris, they already made a TV show. It's called Hannibal. Yep. And so oh, I, yeah, they I did. couldn't really. Oh, that's one. that's a burn for you. I'm um, sorry. Couldn't really pick that. Yeah, yeah. I, bur- I burned yeah, it. So that one. this is why I re- and like who doesn't want to see a leading black man on TV? So it's oh, oh, there you go. He threw in that extra one just for fun. All right, Chris, let's hear what your pick was. Okay, my pick was Saw. <laughs> <laughs> give, him a, give him a second. I want to hear it. You, you guys are. All I want to know how you can adapt this to TV. <laughs> That's really what I want to hear. You guys are all. Laughing. All right, Chris, bring the you bring guys, the heat. You know what? You guys are all laughing, right but this this is my money maker. This is <laughs> this is the question that will bring me the money. Okay. Because listen, John Kramer is like play, played by Tobin Bell. Who is an awesome actor, by the way. Do you know this guy? No. Yeah. Tobin Bell? Yeah, yeah. Come I've on. seen the guy Saw, plays, though. The guy so. plays Jigsaw? Jigsaw. The, the guy, guy plays, plays Jigsaw. Jigsaw. Yeah. Okay, all the Saw movies are about him. And what I think is that there will be an awesome series created around Jigsaw's life in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to see, like, Jigsaw in the future. I don't want to see, like, Jigsaw... Creating puzzles or you want to see what created jigsaw. I want to see what created jigsaw. I want to see like jigsaw when he was like an eighteen year old. Like it's kind of like kind of like they did with the Bates before. Kind of like kind of like what they did with kind of like what they did with Bates Motel. Uh, Yeah, that that kind of thing. Like I want to see. Okay, we already know from the Saw movies that uh, uh, John Kramer uh, had a wife named Jill, right? He had a, a kid. Uh, that kid was had being the keyword, yeah. Yeah, had had a kid. That kid was uh, had to. That that kid was lost. Um, we already know that this guy has suffered from cancer. We already know that that's what um, made part him of what the, made him into what he is. Made him into what he is. But we want to see. Like I don't think that being like losing a kid and having cancer can make you into the monster that Jigsaw was in the movies. Right, Jigsaw was a friggin' monster in the movies. Like, look at that. He set up these traps, right? He set up these awesome traps. Um, like it was people, the devil's playground, essentially. Uh, like, like people get he made people kill their own relatives. People getting smashed in the head. He made he made people kill themselves. All he right, wrap her up. He made people cut out their eyes. I wanted to see Jigsaw from like an eighteen year old. I wanted to be like Smallville or something like that. Like what? What got Jigsaw to this point? I want to see Jigsaw. Like Jigsaw in the movies is like a sixty-year-old man. Right. I want to see what this guy. I'm was giving like. you twenty more seconds. I want to, to see what the, I want to see what this guy was like when he was like eighteen to twenty years old. So he said like a sixties or seventies. But like yeah. That's before he became what he was, so he's just going to be a guy. He's like, not just going to be a guy. He because be, there's because going to be something that's going through his life, and it's going to lead up there's to... There's got to be stuff. something going through his mind. Like, All right, not I'm wrapping every it guy, up. Not every guy that gets cancer right. or loses a child we becomes get it. a we get fucking it. We get it. We sadistic get it. killer. All right. I will have to say one thing before you get into yours. You have a tough road ahead. Okay? Really? Yes. He has managed to sell me on a fucking TV show about Saw. <laughs> and I'm actually shocked about that. So let's hear well, it. Well, I'll give you mine. So what's yours? Okay, mine is Goodfellas. Goodfellas. N- now, the, what, the, my vision for this TV show All right. um, is, is, is fully adapting the Wise Guy novel, which is the life story of Henry Hill, who is the subject of... Of, the main subject, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the main subject of Goodfellas and and Wise Guy that it was adapted into the into the into the film, but you know like th- that movie jumps de- de- decades very quickly. It's only a two hour movie. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more to tell in that story than what we see in the film, and not only that, I don't think it just has to center on Henry Hill exclusively. I think it could be a a, a modern or just a, a retelling of the five families of New York City who are still active today, the five mob families in the commission um, through the 60s or even 50s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and into the 80s, and 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 showing what that what was all going so on. So kind of like uh, back in the day, kind of like how we've made several times before. It's like well, a, to me, kind of be like a modern Boardwalk Empire. 
It'd be a modern boardwalk campfire. It would all be based on true stuff, mostly. Like, there would have to be some fictionalization in there. But you can still have the, the Henry Hill character. You can have, like, the Tommy character that... that uh, um, um, blah, 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 blah. Who am I thinking? Joe Pesci Joe played. Pesci. You can have all of these... You can... Like, Goodfellas mainly centers around the, the, um, the Lucchese family. They're one of the five families of New York. But it, it, you know, it kind of it talks about it doesn't really get into the other families and wh- how they were all related right. and everything else. Mm-hmm. And I think a TV show is the perfect. So you want to intertwine that? And kind I want to go intertwine to the different that. families. I want to show John Gotti. I want to show. Like, it's almost like Sopranos, but a whole bunch of different Sopranos. Yeah, but, kind of but, intertwine. But, but instead of it, but Sopranos are fictionalized. It's all they are. Yeah, right? it's more modern too. Mm-hmm. You know, like this is more real. True. This is more. But what I mean is more like following following the different families and how they kind of uh, interlace and 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 how they interlace and and then how we get to the story in the movie. TV, I think, offers a better medium for showing how all of these um, you know these characters and these historic mobsters that we all know and 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 their demise could be done. And yeah, Boardwalk Empire is set what 50, 60 years before. I'm going to give you another 20 or 30 seconds. 20s ends in the 30s. Yeah, so we've already had the show of the Gaudis. That's that's horrible. So you can have a Henry, you can still have <laughs> Not Henry, the same thing. You but can anyway. still have Henry Hill, you can still have Tommy, you can still have Polly yeah. being sort of how we're introduced to this world, but it can be showing more to that. All right. You know, okay. uh, and I think that there's a ton of source material that it can take. They can also fictionalize it, just like Boardwalk did, mm-hmm. and kind of embellish it and bring even more to richness to the to the mythos of of New York City gangsters. So what you're saying okay. is just the New York City gangster version of Boardwalk Empire. Well, that's what Boardwalk Empire is about, though. About New Jersey. It is about yeah. Jersey. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's very good as well. Um, I think it's down actually funny enough to the two of you, uh, Jeff. As much as what. I, he, somebody burned you and that took a point away and I think it was actually Chris that burned you and that just put you slightly because under the other two movie that sucked yeah I think that was it yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, alright so what I want to hear I won't get to do a tiebreaker no, uh, no we're gonna see we haven't won the round yet we're gonna see alright um, there's decide. probably not a tiebreaker though but I might issue you a, a challenge for one of these questions um, alright so what I want to hear from you guys is because both of you are pretty close and I'm Fucking shocked that he could even sell me on that, quite honestly. <laughs> and yeah. actually, it even sounds like something I'd watch. Like, it, it wasn't... I, I, want, I would watch it just out of curiosity. As for yours, <laughs> I would too. I think that would be... And you kind of hit the same point that kind of he did. Let's hear about the backstory that got them where they were, right? Like, so it's the same idea. So you guys kind of almost have the same principle, which kind of makes it harder for me. So what I would like from you guys is... You, you mentioned both of your stories kind of intertwine to one main character, and then you have kind of offsets. Mm-hmm. You know, yours is a little bit more out there. Yours is obviously focusing on one character. Who's going to play that character? Tobin Bell. He's going to play the young version of himself. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. The young... So in, your, in your fantasy TV show that you've, you've created in your head now, uh, who's going to play that young version of Jigsaw? Uh, the young version of the Jigsaw will be pay, played by Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. And because because we need a guy. We need a guy in his forties. Because we need a guy in his forties. That's what they said when they cast Batman. Listen, we need a guy in his forties. I can't believe we went with that after I've already listen, smashed Ben listen. Affleck like twice tonight. Listen, Jody. All right. You, you, I'm listening. You, okay. You think that I need a guy who's 18 years old, but I don't. I need a guy who's like in his forties, like where it starts to be like when he's lost his his wife. And well, you like, you started off with saying that you would want to see what he'd be like in like eighteen, nineteen years old, and then you said it would be nice to see him jump ahead as well. So, well, we, but we, not we, jump to where the movie is. You gotta see him jump ahead like, as well. You want to like, see what fucks okay, him up? Okay, if you, if you want, okay, we'll we'll have like Ben Affleck play like the old. I, I think this this series will go back and forth. Okay. Right? I think we'll have like. All right. So who's your young pick then? I guess. I think we'll have like Ben Affleck and like Zac Efron, because they will be similar. Okay. Zac Efron. I was waiting for him to just <laughs> Zac Efron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, Efron. Because you know what, you know, Jody? Like, think about this. <laughs> Zac Efron is like a twenty-four-year-old guy now. Okay. Yes. He's my, he's you know. Age. Yeah. He's your yeah. Age. He's your age. Yeah. So he's he's the guy to play the young guy. Uh, ben Affleck can play the older guy. Like they, they, they are similar looking. Right. Like they're both white guys. They both got like slick back here. 
They got they're both white guys and they can both slick their hair back. All right. No, no, but it's like a clean cut, good looking guy man goes nuts. I so it's a progression of they're, they're crazy. Guy, because honestly, guy. like if you've seen like um, what was that uh, Gone Girl, Gone Girl, right. the one with Ben Affleck just recently directed it. Uh, directed, but he's also in it. Is yeah. it? Oh, I thought just Casey Affleck was in that one. But Gone Girl's an yeah. awesome movie. No, actually. it's him. It's 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 Affleck. Uh, Gone Girl is a movie that pissed me off at the end because I didn't know how it would end because mm. I never read the book and I don't care to. I hated uh, that movie but too. he's he's a dick. And he is a dick, just like the woman is, and it's almost like they both got their comeuppance, right? They, but they, that, but that, neither that, one technically did. That movie ended like they were doing a reality show, and it was stupid. Yeah, it was <laughs> retarded. Um, either way, so but I can kind of see his point as being the, the, the older guy being Ben Affleck, because Ben Affleck kind of can get that twisty, but he can't get twisty enough that okay. you think he's going to be the guy in Saw, right? right? So, all right. No, you've but had, it you've can had be had twisty hey, You've had your chance. All right. What, what, what do you fuck you? <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to know? I want to know who's gonna play your main character. Well, I think I know that you're gonna have a couple main characters, but let's face it, you still have to have that main character. Well, yeah, you have to kind of recast uh, like the Henry Hill character, and you, of and, you know, you probably started in like the fifties and yeah. going so. The who's 50s. gonna play the fifties then? Um, I to me, it's Aaron Paul, Aaron Paul. Uh, from right. Breaking Bad. Yeah. I think he could play a younger version of Henry Hill. I He's the kind of guy that surprises me actually because every time I see him in something different it surprises me. I, think I, he, I, I don't think I don't think he gets the credit for the range that he can do. I think he's got the energy similar to... Same thing with Ben Affleck, because Ben Affleck, I would have never thought would have been a crazy fucking asshole. And, like, I just wouldn't think he could do that well. He can. Yeah. You know what he I mean? Can. But he's he can. Awesome. Yeah, so same way. Yeah, like Aaron Paul, to me, he he has that energy and that intensity that I think Ray Liotta brought to that yep. character. Yeah, I can see And that. I think that's kind of what we'd be expecting. Uh, off the handle a bit. A little bit, like, that, that nuts... It's like, in control, but it's a controlled chaos. You look in yeah. the eyes and you're like, it's a caged fucking animal, right? Like, <laughs> you know, it's just nuts. Right. So that being said, who would play the older version of it? Let's say if you were jumping back and forth, try to be more fair to what Chris was saying. Um, Let's say you're jumping ahead 20 years. Who's going to play that older well, version? To me, of like it would be Aaron Paul with like makeup and prosthetic. Oh, okay. it, it, so it, you're going to keep the same actor. You think I wouldn't you can want do both? I don't think changing actor. I think that would be distracting to the audiences. Um, I think that... You know, <laughs> See, I don't think so because I think a 20-year difference... You can look totally well, different. But they did that in Goodfellas. Jody, did you look the same when you were 20 years younger? They did that in Back no, to the No, I looked better. They did that yeah. in Back to the Future, and that was 30 years ago. Like, yeah. you know, like they, so, they, they. Yeah, but they also didn't have the same actors for Back to the Future 2. Yeah. There was well, say, the mother they did. They, they had still Leah Thompson. Yeah, that was still Leah Thompson. They didn't really need the father. Crispin <laughs> yeah, Glover. Well, Crispin well, Glover was in the second regardless, one. Regardless, yeah. like, I think, especially with today's like, yeah, effects, he sucks. you can do a lot with practical. <laughs> Can I, can I? Can I finish? Right. Can I finish? Can I finish? I can't finish. <laughs> we can't have one of these without somebody saying that. Yeah. Um, I think you can do a lot with practical, and I think it would take the audience away from it if you recast it or say, oh, and now it's the 70s, so now I brought in this new actor. All right. Uh, and just on a note, like, his show is ridiculous. Like, what's going to happen? Like, he's not even jigsaw yet. He's not going to be putting people into traps. He's just going to be getting depressed and getting the shit kicked out of him for life. <laughs> is that the show? <laughs> like, I don't understand. It's not bad, Dave. It's kind of it's what like, Breaking Bad it's, is. It's like, <laughs> that is what Breaking Bad is, though. Okay, yeah. you know what? Do you think that one day, all of a sudden, you decide to put, to like, change some guys to a toilet? Do you think that it's like, one day I'm like, okay, I'm a normal guy. But anyway, okay, next day, I'll change some guy to a toilet. But Chris, and make him saw his leg Chris, off. Chris, it's not going to be relatable to the original source material, which is Saw. There's seven Saw movies. There's they seven have, Saw. They movies. have an established gimmick, right, in this franchise where they. Well, the, no, the gimmick in this, the gimmick in the Saw franchise is that they're gore movies. They're right? gore they're, movies. They're like where he, he like takes porn. bad people and he puts them into situations where they have to like either mutilate themselves or do something yes, insane. I agree. And none of that's going to be in your show. Right. None of that will be in the show. So, because it's just like Base Motel. Like, Base Motel is a very successful show. Finish. And mm -hmm. you know what? Base Motel is like... I will be in a minute. It, go on, doing? go on. I want to hear this. Base Motel is coming from, like, the friggin' famous scene where they stabbed a girl in the shower. Yeah. Like, right? In Psycho, yeah. In Psycho. Right, that's where base motels came but, from. But okay, but so don't you think that saw, like if they could 
like develop his character because the only the only reference in Saw is that Jigsaw got his wife pregnant and her name was Jill. Her name was Jill, by the way. They had they you, you mentioned they, this, yeah. Yes. The baby uh, got aborted and then he got cancer. That's That's that, a terrible that's, TV show. Okay. That's no no, it's not a TV show. I'm guessing it's not just going to be that. That's all they said about his past life in the movies. That's well, all he said. All right. But I think it could all be right. more of a I'm movie. calling it. I'm done. I think it could be more, right. more of a TV show in the past. Okay. As far as you haven't asked me, which maybe one I would rather watch. Maybe like, a gra- there. maybe like graphic novel. All it right. wouldn't even be graphic. It would be just like... All right, Eamon. Out of those two, which one would you watch? Out of those two? Uh, I think I'd watch Saw. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> I'd watch The Goodfellas. You'd watch The Goodfellas. Uh, See, you guys it. didn't help me at all. Yeah. yeah. Why I, would you watch The Goodfellas movie? Because, uh, the Goodfellas show. Because over. as a series, I think good, The Goodfellas could jump, like Dave was saying, could jump between different storylines. Whereas, I think with the Saw... This would be more eccentric to one Very eccentric, and I think it wouldn't last long. I think it would be an okay show for a season. And then it would kind right. of go like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Why would you pick Saw? <laughs> because it feels more connected. It feels like it could happen. Because you want to know, why is he doing these things? Why is he making Agree people him. Yeah. himself? Agree with yeah, him. but yeah, Why is he well, making people Dave, play Dave, these so-called games? Dave has a history of, of of this chat because this is a real story. Like the the Goodfellas was based on a real story. I can story. go off based, based on off memoirs. the Henry Hill story, but way beyond that, there's you can so go, much more. You can span it. All right, I'm done. I'm gonna give it to Dave. Oh man, which kind of sucks because honestly, I had no fucking idea how he was gonna do that, and he still did it. I was I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but he pitched a very bad wise, TV show. Yeah. Number one, Dave. Dave brought up the idea of the fact that there would be a lot of content. He could always expand. He could always move around. You can't. You have to stay to a set storyline. And to Dave's point, or to Jeff's point, Jeff said clearly, "This is a centric storyline. <coughs> it's gonna get boring. It's gonna end up dying." Us, man. Sorry, but that's just how it goes. All right, that being said, our final tally is Jeff with three, Chris with one, and Dave with two. So Jeff and I, Dave are going to do it. I got one. Oh, hey, I, got go back. I always own the game. Not only that, but he got beach volleyball, which is impressive <laughs> as hell. I don't hell. know how he didn't win music. <laughs> that Canadian <laughs> rapper, he was one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shock. Oh, jeez. All right. Jeff yeah, and Dave. Slide. Slide. I have Please. absolutely no questions for the speed round. I already prepped, so I'm doing it all off the top of my head. Oh, wow. All right. Can I come up with the movie one? Because I actually have a really good movie one. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give you the movie one. Let's hear it. <laughs> right. What is the best thing? movie that is so bad that is good? What is, like... Oh. All right, actually, so I, I like, like that one. I like it because... All right, so let's give you guys a second for this. Like, so basically, let, here, let me kind of reiterate it a little bit better. Um, a guilty pleasure of a movie. A movie that you know... People are going to make fun of you for listening, watching it. Mm. But you know, it's just so fucking yeah, what, fun to watch. What's the best guilty pleasure movie? What's the best guilty pleasure movie? I'll yeah. Time Cop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yours? Lethal Weapon 4. Lethal Weapon 4. Wow. <laughs> All right. Let's hear it. Time Cop. Time Cop. You got a minute. It has everything it should to be a good movie, but it doesn't because Jean Claude Van Damme is ridiculous in it. Okay. Uh, you know, just the scene where he's like, look at. What do you see on the boot? It says Kodiak. He's like, yes, I'm a bear. Right? <laughs> That's true. That was wine. Right? Uh, just like everything about it, like that movie is fun, but ridiculous. It's terrible. Yeah. The, just like when, when he's like, you can't occupy the same space. Right? And they get thrown into each other. And they're like, yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. But it's funny as hell. I have a screener copy of that movie. Yeah. Like I have that. a screener copy that I got from Jumbo Video. And when I said, oh, I'll bring it back, they're like, no, don't worry about it. We're not going to watch it. <laughs> I, I love how every like all the criminals who come back from the future, which I believe is like set around this time. Yep. Yeah. It's around right? this time. And yeah. they all have these weird emo haircuts and they all like to wear suits. Yeah. With, yeah, with, with yeah. no ties. Yeah. All right, uh, like it's just it's just ten seconds. So silly. It's it's fun but ridiculous, right. and, and in no way should it be respected. I agree. Okay. All right, leave the weapon four. Let's leave hear. The it. weapon four is a terrible movie, but it's fun and it's funny. It's one of those movies you watch. You're like, this is terrible. This is dog shit. 
But you're watching it, and <laughs> now, you go... You're sorry, going, just just reiterate which one 4 was about. That's 4 is the one where Chris it's Rock. A- Asian. Yeah, Chris Rock's in it, but Chris it's, the, Rock. it's the Asian oh, one. It's okay. one with the, the Benny, and they're in the dentist fucking office. Oh, and they're making okay, a laugh, yeah. and then Jet Li, they fight Jet Li at the end. It's yeah. a terrible fight scene. And yeah. he, takes right. the, he takes the gun apart. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he takes the gun apart, and they kill Jet Li, but like the whole movie is just... like. So what's fun about it, then? Because obviously we know oh, it's terrible. Okay, first of all, Joe Pesci's in it, and he's hilarious. And we have we have a uh, Chris Rock. We, there's comedic uh, moments in the movie where you're like that's funny, but this movie's dog shit because the plot is so terrible. <laughs> you're like, oh, we got this money. Oh, they're printing money. We have to go find the warehouse and then go to the warehouse and then. They, and how do they know they're even printing in a warehouse? They could just be printing in some dude's garage. That's the like, thing is, there's no yeah, explanations on these things, but yeah. it really doesn't matter because the movie's really just about Mel Gibson chasing Jet Li across like building tops, and you're just right, like, giving you about another ten seconds. I'm just telling Unless you. Unless you don't need it. I don't really need it, but I will say that Lethal Weapon 4 is better than Lethal Weapon 3, but most people say it's one. Between <laughs> the two of you, I'm going to give that one to Dave. All right. You know what? I, I probably would have... He won. had a passion for that movie. I can see it in his eye. He's like, it's if fucking I, if, terrible, but I love it. Okay. All right, television gentlemen. Mm-hmm. If you could only live with one series on DVD that you had to watch over and over and over again, Wait, could you stop watching it to other things, or did you always have to be watching it? It's not a punishment. This is hell. This is the only. <laughs> this is the only <laughs> video you're gonna get to watch for the rest of your life. It could be any series, mm-hmm. but it has to be restricted to the '80s. So an 80s series, a series that started in the '80s. It could have went longer, but it had oh. to start in the '80s. Sure. Seinfeld. All right. Seinfeld. All right. And you? Star Trek: Next Generation. I, okay, I knew he was gonna pick that. Uh, yeah, Simpsons started Simpsons in 89, that's technically what it's called. It's still going. Fight. Simpsons is a cheat. It's going, but it shouldn't be. So is Seinfeld, but yeah. you said it started in the 80s, so... Yeah, it did start in the 80s, yeah. Simpsons went for, like, decades. It's still going. Yeah. It's, it's not going well, though. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, plus All right. But you still have tons of stuff to you watch. You went in once. You're not even going to start you went in sheer first. quit, though. He did, yeah, but uh, let's anyway, face it, Seinfeld. somebody else will do the... All right, if you're going to watch a show over and over and over again, there's a reason why Seinfeld is still on TV in prime time all the time, because... It's rewatchable. It's fun to watch. There's jokes that still land a day, no matter what. There's situations that you can laugh at. Star Trek Next Generation is one of those shows that's not on TV anymore, really. People aren't going back. I clamor to watch, you know, the even the good episodes. But Seinfeld is continuously a good show. There's classic episodes. Everyone loves it. Everyone knows there's episodes of that show that I'm rewatching. I would still laugh if I had to watch it like in hell over and over like Eamon was. <laughs> you know, Star- He's like, am I going to hell and am I only watching this? Star Trek Next Generation, if I had to watch like those Worf episodes uh, the Warf over episodes and over, terrible. any episode with up. Alexander in it is a terrible episode. <laughs> There's it really is. I, li- I like him. You like <laughs> Alexander? Really? I like it all. Alexander's terrible. <laughs> and the entire first season, oh, with the exception it, of the first oh, episode. episode was good. with Wesley Crusher, too? Like, nah, some like, of the Wesley Crusher episodes were good, uh, though. I like the one where he went to the Academy and did that fucking fancy loop thing and then fucking killed people. The oh, Starburst the thing? The Starburst, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they're like, no, I didn't fucking do that. I didn't do that. Tom and then Harris. they're like, no, we saw Tom you. Harris yeah, Thomas Harris, Harris was in it. Tom Locarno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a different one at that He was a Tom. All right, either way. Let's hear yours. Well, Star Trek: The Next Generation, like it's got so it's got like a hundred and something episodes, one hundred and seventy episodes, I think. Something like that, yeah. Um, it it. But Seinfeld also has a pretty hard run too. Seinfeld, How many episodes are there? If I had to watch that over ninety, nine seasons. Nine seasons. How many in a season do we know? Uh, but like the first season is only like five episodes, and then yeah. second season is ten episodes. I so think how many total? Are, I think they're around two hundred. Yeah. Two hundred, eh? Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot of episodes. A lot, that's that's a lot of more than but it also had a longer run than Star Trek. Though, At least with like okay, the thing I would why I wouldn't want to watch Seinfeld over and over again. All right. Is because it would just get like come on, like like it's the same shit over and over again. It would not entertain me. There would not be enough to like. Intellectually stimulate me. Enough of Every time for the episode is different. I'm a, I'm a Jeff on this. No, next right, generation. Way, you get your next point. Next generation, you have so many different types of science fiction out there concepts, character development. You're seeing the Federation. You're seeing like just like the, there's the all this uh, with Gowra like whoa. <laughs> 
Like, come on, I haven't fucking watched those. Like, yeah, but I so basically, what you're that. saying is it's more of a it's the the story is going to be more compelling over yeah, the yeah. With the thing with next year, because generation. the whole point, the whole the whole click with Seinfeld though is the fact that there's no story. It's it's just it's random shit that happens, right? Yeah. So it's he, different he, every he's episode. got he's got 200 episodes, but they're like 22 minutes. Mine are 40 something minutes, and I got 173. 40, I, 40, I have 100. more content. I have more diversity, more different. But you stories. have more quality. It is more Def- boring. I have more entertainment. His is silly. It's you it's know, comedy. It's, it's supposed silly. to be silly. It's meant to be There's, silly. There is comedy in Star Trek: Next Generation. There is, there is drama. But it's just there, com- not much. But there, there are, there's there's more comedy episodes. in their movies. But if you have to watch TV something show. over and over, That's I true. think comedy would be better. That is than, true. It's not about comedy just, specifically, but it has comedic right. elements. As we all know at this table, I think most of you know, I absolutely despise Seinfeld. I think it's a terrible show. Okay, but that being said, I'm still going to give you the point because you, you, the, yes, you have good when it comes to storyline, characters and stuff, but it is really random and there's no set course to it. You can watch an episode from season five and then watch an episode from season one. You're still okay. You're not done. I don't know where you're going. I see. So do you have a question? Yeah, I do have a question. It doesn't matter if it's hip hop band, rock band, anything. Who is the best bass player in the world? Bass player. Of all time or like right now? Or it doesn't matter. I think that could be open-ended. I... Open-ended. Open-ended. Best bass player in your time. opinion. Sell me on it. Getty Lee. All right, you're Getty Lee. What are you? John Paul Jones. All right. You go ahead. John Paul Jones, what Sell band me. is he from? Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Yeah? yeah. He's also in them Cricket Vultures. Yeah. He is. All right. Go ahead. Getty Lee. It's not... Easy to sing like that while you're playing bass, and if you call what Giddy Lee does is singing, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I rather I rather hear him play a bass. Let's just say that his beats are are dynamic. They're rich. They're full. They're they're dynamic. They're they're textured. It's so dynamic. It's been said twice. Dave, can you can you, can you say a, a song that Giddy Lee plays? Yeah, give me give me a song that Giddy Lee plays that you think excels the bass. <laughs> Limelight? 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 No, that's, no, no. That's man. not a bad pick, actually. No, that's, that's a bad pick. I think you should pick um, 2112. Sure. 2112. He doesn't know that. <laughs> All right, either way. 2112. All right, so that's that's your answer. YYZ would be a good choice. YYZ right. is a good choice. YYZ. Definitely YYZ. All right, we're on that one now, are we? All right, we're good. All right, here we go. Also, also um, self divisions. Hey, hey. Good choice. Hey, Great. we're done. Um, all right, John Paul Jones. All right, he was able to. Yeah, all right, let's face it. Let's up and everyone knows let's up and for the other three guys. But John Paul Jones was amazing at being in the background but still being noticeable. He had great um, ability to put himself into songs where you don't realize how needed that bass is. Like he, a classic example, Stairway to Heaven. I mean, yeah. we go right at the end of the song, right when it get you know the drums come in and then we get into the real crescendo. Without the bass in that, helping that guitar along, it would just sound like kind of nonsense. The bass carries it, and you know, there's tons of songs where I could go with Achilles Last Stand. Right, give me, give me one song that you think really throws that out there. Uh, trampled uh, uh, underfoot. Um, yeah. I would go with that for sure because right. that song in, on Physical Graffiti is just a kick-ass bass song, and like I said, he's in them Crooked Vultures, All and right. is playing with Dave Grohl, and it's just a, an insanely good bassist. Alright. Um, how, you know how me a bit of the bass rift? Huh? Well, I, that's not really my, my skill. Just uh, give me <laughs> give me something that I can recognize. Come on, something from Rush. Do, 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 do. Dude, 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 he's doing limelight. <laughs> that is limelight. It's like the only dude, song you fucking know. But that's fine. That's fine. He picked it. That's good. Dude, 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 dude. All right. All right. What about you? Let's hear it. I'm not doing a bass riff for. All like... right. He wins. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Sorry. I'm not doing a bass riff. You won't get the point. You won't get the point if you're not willing to work for it. All right. Next one's up. Sports. <laughs> good job, man. Thank you. Bullshit. There's always one of those. He doesn't even know Rush. <laughs> <laughs> he does know. He's Rush. the master of the he music round. He obviously does know Rush. He is the he master of the music round. Obviously, I he know knows the song Limelight, and that's it. <laughs> and if I'm going to honestly, if you hummed it, if you hummed anything, it didn't even matter what it was, you would have won. <laughs> I think I should win for not humming. <laughs> oh boy. Well, 
<laughs> well, you didn't my table, that. my rules. All right. <laughs> Sports. Yes. Sports. What do you got? I got nothing. Okay. Um, Can you want me to help you again? Sure. If you got one ready, let's go. What sport is really, is really, really over you? Like, what sport is so over talked about? Uh, football. Over discussed. American football. What American football. Over, that's a good thing. What pick. sport is over discussed? That's the question. So, when we tune into the news radio, what do we hear all the time with the sports uh, channels? I listen to the news radio all the time. American yeah, sports radio. I do too. American sports radio. So, you pick uh, oh, American fucking, football? I, I hate it. I turn the fucking. Turn, turn it off. All right. What about you? What do you pick? Mm, it's tough. There's a few I would that come to mind. It somewhat hurts me to say it because I I do enjoy this sport, but I I when it's talked about at length, yeah. Um, I don't really feel like they say anything. And that's baseball. Okay. Um, Jeff's first though. Yeah, American football. Okay. There's like like 60 guys on the team, and they're talking about all these things. There's like 32 teams in the NFL. Yep. It's a lot of players. They're talking about all these fucking guys that are basically criminals. And you know, <laughs> let's face it, they are. Like, like half, the, half the league is criminals. Uh, they certainly have a bad rap, don't they? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, they think it's a well-earned rap. Anyway, the, the, and they, discuss, they, they talk about these guys like it, like it matters. Like, 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 like I understand in like a hockey or basketball, the limited amount of And players, to be clear, we don't condone beating wives. No. No, in no, elevators no, or I'm without just, elevators. I just want, that's just one of the challenges. I'm just strictly, I mean, and that comes up a lot in sports news radio. And this fucking, sports news. what is it, deflate gate or whatever? Deflate gate. I fucking heard all about Who that. Cares? I don't care. Yeah, Who I don't care? care. Who cares how long Tom Brady got suspended? People are talking about this like it matters. Yeah. It's not You got, matter. what, four games or something like that? And I it's right. like, why do we like, care? Like, I don't have a team to cheer for in the NFL, nor will I ever. The NFL is one of those things. I'll watch the Super Bowl and I could care less afterward. Yet it's talked about incessantly, mainly because of fantasy sports. And I cannot actually. That's a good point. And I cannot. Um, I cannot bear to listen. I to think it. fantasy I sports does actually drive that way more than it needs to. Oh, yeah. it, it absolutely drives the NFL yeah. because that's people, a very good point. People actually, have, I like that point. People have these, you know, players in their pools, and, and I've never heard of them. Like our bro- other brother, Rich, he plays the. He knows every player, and I just go like, who the fuck cares, Rich? Like, Fair <laughs> like who cares? Who, All right, let's hear who yours. The wide receiver is on the Minnesota Vikings or the third. Street. I couldn't name five people. I honestly. couldn't name it either. Yeah. Um, like. My, he doesn't like football. Now, I, just just a disclaimer here. I hate baseball. I know you hate baseball. I like baseball, but my pro, I, I like to watch a baseball game. I can appreciate a baseball game. All right. Um, but when I listen to them, when I listen to them, <laughs> fuck, when I listen, edit. Yeah, when I listen to them talk about um, baseball on the on the radio, I'm like. They didn't fucking say anything. Like they said nothing constructive. They said nothing. They like it's it's usually people calling and going. Like in our case, we're in Toronto, so we hear about the Blue Jays, and they say, you know, John Gibbons should be fired because I don't know why we're not winning. And then, and then the radio host is like, "What can he do? He can't do anything. He's got his pitchers. He's got his players. What's he supposed to do?" And they go, "I don't know. There's got to be something." They go, "No." There's nothing he can do. All right, I'm gonna give you another ten seconds. Uh, my point, my, my point of the matter is that it's it's kind of like there's it's baseball is so like set by who you have and what the pieces you have, and it, it's almost like I heard somebody refer to managing teams in baseball like playing chess. If right. you don't have the right pieces in play at the right time, you will never win. You'll never it's win. Just, it's like it's like they're like, well, John Gibbons is all he's got. He's got. He's got uh, ten pawns, and that's it. And maybe he's got one bishop. Yeah. And the other team's got, got more. All so right. we're gonna lose more All most right. of the time. So between those two guys, who do you think you feel you've heard too much about? If you had to pick one, mm, I've got to say baseball. Think baseball, but do you think that's because of what you listen to, or do you think that's because that's just you hear more of that? Like when you tune into like TSN or whatever, what do you normally see most of? Do you see mostly baseball, or do you see mostly? I actually see mostly hockey. Most, well, obviously, yeah, but um, I think I see more baseball than I do football. All right. 
See, I'm actually the other way around. I hear a ton of football, and I don't know why. It's ridiculous. It's, Especially it's in nauseating. Canada. It's well, nauseating. Yeah. yeah. Football, like, I barely hear anything about the CFL. I barely only, hear anything about last, it. But I hear tons about the NFL. The NFL is one of those things where it's like everyone gives a fuck about it in Canada. I can't right. understand why. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to actually give this one to Jeff, and it was actually mostly on your fantasy football thing that I should got it for you. Uh, because I really think that does drive the industry for that. It, it's it's massive. But I think that was really close, though. I think between the two of you, it was pretty hard. All right, so I guess Jeff technically is in the lead again, but we still have two questions. So this is still anybody's game. This could be Dave's night. Could be, and it's going to hurt me. I'm just telling you that now, so I have to give it to him. But I'm going to be unbiased. History. If you could take one famous figure out of the 20th century... Who would you take out? As in, made it so they wouldn't exist anymore, and how would that affect the world? Hitler. Oh, I knew somebody was going to hit Hitler. What about you? Just if you could take anybody out to change something, whether it be for the good or for the yeah, bad, doesn't matter, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Who would you? Who do you think you could take out that would really? Fu- <laughs> That's an interesting one. All right, let's hear yours, Hitler. Hitler um, killed six million Jews. Um, started World War II, created fascism, Nazism that still is around today, even in this country and in the Those are big markets. ones. Yep. Um, everyone's like, if you had a time machine, you would have a, a moral obligation to go back and kill Hitler. You're not even asking me to do that. You're just saying, could I erase him from existence? Yep. Clearly I would. So uh, therefore right. I win. Go. By the way, <laughs> um, guys, if I was answering this question... You would hang up at one. What would you think? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus from the twenty. He wouldn't exist. He wouldn't the, be existent. No, in the listen. Century. If Jesus did not exist anymore, twentieth century. Think about how the world would have changed. Well, I guess technically he could erase all existence of it in the twentieth century. So up until the nineteenth century, people would believe in it. Jesus that. is and then still around. That is a good point. Jesus, Jesus is still would be a good answer. Jesus I is still around nowadays. Stop, All right, stop either talking. Way. You're talking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting cut out by the 12 year old. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, let's hear yours. All right, Oppenheimer. Now, just, just to be Who clear. Who the hell is Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer created and invented the nuclear weapon. Yep. The nuclear bomb. Yeah. I <laughs> He was the guy that started all that. Yeah. Yep. And when he created it, I think he said something to the effect that I have created the world, the, the worst thing to humanity. Um, it's the most beautiful and the most destructive thing that we've ever created. And even he said he wished he could have uninvented it. So that's why I thought of him. In so this. you could uninvent him, un-invent which would essentially him. uninvent and, that. And, if, and you know, World then War we wouldn't II, have Hiroshima. World War II, though, could have ended completely differently because the nuclear deterrent really, I mean, we would have won the German war, but the, the Japan war. The Japan war would have been a harder one. Would have been a harder one, and but eventually that would have ended because of Russia. So yes. I, I think we probably would have, but the thing is the Cold War would have been totally different. And oh well, we, there wouldn't be one. There realistically, one, and and I think we would have had a lot of um, continued strife after. But do you think if somebody else would have picked up on that and just did it anyway? That's not what. And I, same goes for you. Would do, do you think if Hitler didn't exist, that somebody else would still have taken? I think. Shoes? I think no. Uh, but I think okay. a lot of people. Uh, why? Why not? Why couldn't Goebbels? Uh, uh, Joseph Goebbels could, like, you know, he could have been the guy for Hitler, inside of Hitler. Or there's plenty of other Nazis. The Nazi right. Party wasn't just because of Hitler. You know, he, he was the fr- forefront of it, but he was like there was plenty of people willing to um, follow him, but also believed in what he he, he thought. <coughs> but he was um, the one who thought it up in the first place. The same thing with Oppenheimer. Plenty of people worked on the Manhattan Project with Oppenheimer. Absolutely. But Oppenheimer had the idea, and he put into practice Einstein's um, equations, yep. and he really. But somebody else could have did that too from that. Absolutely, group. but Absolutely. it might have happened at a later time, and I think also who could have affected things drastically by doing that. Yeah. Things drastically. I don't think we would have had a nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima. I don't think we necessarily would have had uh, a Cold War in the same way because Russia was panicked after the United States invented nuclear technology to catch up, and by the fifties they did. So. Some other nuclear physicist would have thought that up eventually. Well, somebody else could have run the Nazi I'm party. I'm just saying that... The, at the no, time. I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay, no. tell me why. I just think they, they talk about how Hitler was a charismatic leader. I don't really get it, but the Germans thought so. 
and that they were yeah, but he was a very well uh, orator. That's he what was they an said. Incredible orator. I've seen his speeches. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. but you <laughs> also don't speak German. I don't speak German. <laughs> and thank God. And if you translate that. some can, of his can stuff, I, can I go back to a previous debate? He thinks Obama is the best orator of all time oh, <laughs> in English. Yeah. I'm just saying, Hitler. Hmm. Like Kevin's answer that night, way better orator than Obama. Like he had people hypnotized. I'm against Hitler. Okay, I'm anti-Hitler. I'm saying he never should have existed. And if he had, if he had been wiped out, like how many, how many films are and, and storylines are based around this premise? Like Valkyrie was all about knocking out Hitler. It wasn't all about knocking out everybody else. Well, that's true. There's an awful lot of movies yeah, about that. <laughs> Of the world. That's that is like the punchline of every time thing ever. It's like, go back and kill Hitler. Go back and kill Hitler. Nobody's ever talking about Oppenheimer because nobody even remembers that. Because they know that somebody else would have invented that technology eventually. All right, I'm going to give it to Dave just on that alone. I believe in you. Now that also ties it up, which means we have a wild card. It's the 80s. Oh, you love the 80s. I just love to throw the 80s in because it makes things more interesting with you two as well. Why don't you throw in the 70s? I'm not actually going to. I'm going to pick the 80s as being our, our focus here. If, if, if you ran an arcade and you could only keep one game going, what would it be? And it could only be a game that was in the 80s. Plenty to choose from. There's billions of games. Can I tell them what mine was after? Absolutely. Can I hear yours first, Damon? <laughs> oh, no, I, uh, I think that'd Fine, be Fine, but you can't take it. So I'm going to give I you each about 30 seconds. I'd pick um, Donkey Kong. That's good what pick, I was going to pick. pick. Good pick. What about I'm going to kill this one. I'm going to ask your answer in a minute. Don't worry. All right. Arcade game? Yes. Yeah. It has to be an arcade game. You could keep in mind the eighties. The eighties arcade was the the pinnacle of the arcade. Almost every game you can probably think of probably started in the eighties in arcades. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, you're wrong, Joe. You know what? A lot of the best games came out in the nineties. No, the best games came out in the nineties clearly. But if it wasn't for those games previous to it, none of them would happen. I true. want to be careful with my answer here. I'll tell you right now, as somebody who is a, an absolute database of video game knowledge, yeah. if you pick something that's not in the eighties, I will let you know. Okay, All it's right. not even like I can think of things, but I'm like, All right. that wasn't good. Um, not necessarily about it good though. It's it's good. The, the question is more what would generate more revenue to you? You think what would be a good one to pe- what was keep? the original question again? The question was essentially if you had an arcade, you could only keep one game going. In the eighties. In the eighties. Like what you, game would you, you, you pick? You only keep one game. Are we so in one the eighties? We're, we're in the eighties. Well, essentially, you'd have to be. I you'd guess. have to be. So it's 1988 or something. You know? Yeah. yeah. Right. Let's say it's eighty nine. You have the selection of everything that was made in the eighties. Pick a game that you'd keep going. If you had to unplug them all except for one, which one would it be that you'd keep going? I guess it's it's got to be Pac-Man. Well, that's a good pick as well. All right. Well, Pac-Man seventies, but so let's hear what you would have said. Uh, Pac-Man actually. Yeah, the, well, uh, I think Miss Pac-Man is no. Better Pac-Man than was eighties. Than, than, than Pac-Man. Eighty-two, actually. Eighty-one, eighty-two. So Pac-Man. What, what's his choice? His choice was Donkey Kong, which was 80, 82. Okay, yeah, you know what? It's nineteen eighty-five. That you guys didn't think about Super Mario Brothers. That wasn't an arcade That's game. That's why. Yes, I, actually, it was an arcade That's game. That's why what? I picked Donkey Kong. It was Kong. part of. It was a part of Nintendo Ten. Yeah. That's why I picked. And it was an arcade Kong. game. Without Donkey Kong, there would have been no Super Donkey Mario. Donkey Kong. Really actually, put I have several. Tro- can I tell my choices first? You can say a couple. Yeah. Uh, I would have done Mario Brothers or Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Mike Tyson's Punch Out was never available as an arcade game. It wasn't. No. And also, Mike well, then Mario, Mario Brothers. Mike Tyson's Punch Out came out uh, in reason. the early nineties, okay. like original Mario. No, Brothers. actually, it came Super out eighty-eight. You're, you're yeah. thinking of Nintendo, not the arcade. I know, but I, I'm just thinking. Super Mario. I, I don't know a lot of arcade. There was. He, I All right, either this, way. But I, I do know that the original Donkey Kong game was the game that basically spawned the whole Super Mario Brothers. Um, it was actually he was and right, Donkey Kong in in, in Donkey, Donkey Kong in Donkey Kong the and character is based on Mario. Um, however, he was not called Mario; he was called Jumpman. Jumpman. Yeah. Uh, however, that is the basis for the Mario Brothers game, which ended up coming out after, which had clearly Mario in it. 
And in Donkey Kong, basically, <laughs> you play as Jumpman, right? You play as Jumpman, which is really Mario. It's right. the same guy. It's yeah. the same guy. Yeah, and just Mario. wasn't called Mario back then. Mario Jumpman Mario. Actually, he was a carpenter in Donkey Kong. He was a carpenter in Donkey Kong. Absolutely. I'm glad this you This is a very deep that. intellectual it's conversation. He's a plumber, right? About he was, yeah, the origins of a it was, it, He was ended up being a plumber later on. There's a whole debate about what his last name actually is, because technically it's Mario Mario. <laughs> Can I change my answer? Mario. But also, technically, he doesn't have one. He technically doesn't. Can I change my answer? I don't care. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Donkey Kong. Let's hear it. Donkey Kong, like I said, spawned the whole Mario franchise. But the reason why I picked it was if you could only pick one game, that game was... It's got more of a fun appeal than like a Pac-Man or any other game. If people want to go play a game... You, you get to, you know, it's kind of like, almost like the original Mega Man. Mega Man is one of my favorite games of all time. And the reason why I like Fun Donkey game. Kong is because it's uh, very similar to Mega Man, where you're running up ladders, you're running across uh, different platforms. It does have some of those elements. Though. It has elements. Yep. It's not the same game at all. No. But it, it has elements where you're trying to get away, you're trying to fight a boss, you're trying to... Um, uh, the other know. thing that also, you which kind of coincides with what you're talking about, um, is Donkey Kong was one of the first games to utilize multiple screens. So it was a screen that you could go to one and then it would bring up a different type of level that was drawn differently in all, all different areas. It didn't have the same aspect. Yeah. Pac-Man, for instance, had the same screen over and over again for the most part, and then the difficulty changed. The maze would change a little bit. The maze would change, change a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But the premise was still the same, whereas in Donkey Kong, you would have... Your, your premise was still the same, but the, the boards were laid out to the point where you'd have to like you know walk across certain things to get rid of stuff, uh, whereas it wasn't just always go up constantly in a zigzag and you're right. good, right? Like, there was different ways to do it eventually. There was ladders. Yeah. And, and, and Pac-Man, and same and idea. So and Pac-Man also over. had, to give Pac-Man a little bit of credit, you also have a legacy there as well because there was various versions of Pac-Man. Pac-Man Jr., uh, Miss Pac-Man as well, which Miss yeah, right. Pac-Man actually outsold Pac-Man. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man is technically a boot. It's technically a ripoff, though. No, right. sorry, it was done by the same company. Same. I know, but they didn't get... That's like, that's like saying Mario's a ripoff of Donkey Kong. Do no, we, because they actually had the rights for that. Well, no. It goes into a lot of All right, either way. No, 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 no. All right, Chris I, I, wants to say something quickly. <laughs> this Pac-Man is the same company as Pac-Man. I want to say something yeah. quickly. And, and this is mostly directed towards Jody. All right. <laughs> you could, you pretty much write my my name down there, even though I'm not in this. So whoever wants to take my answer can. They take can't it. now, but anyway. They can can't you just now. shoot it out so I can get this ended? Jody, honestly, '80s arcade games. Yars Revenge. Yars Revenge was awesome. Can anyone ever beat that? Yars Nobody Revenge was a great game. Can beat that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I say about it. Yars Revenge. It, as long as Jody knows this game. You guys, are, awesome. you guys are dead. However, I still think the two are how bigger are we, How are we though. dead? It's not even one of the two. You're, you're, you're not even playing. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear your it's Pac-Man like argument. Nowhere, All right, All right. Pac-Man Ch- argument. Let's Jerry, hear it. Choose, choose your Shut revenge. You Ch- can't choose it. He's already done. Anyway. To me, like, Pac-Man is a game. It's a classic. It's it's it, it never really, to me, got old. It's still played today. Like, I was on Google one day, and, like, they were like, hey, you want to turn the streets into Pac-Man? And that was pretty cool. And I was like, hey, this is fun. Like, Pac-Man is such a simple game because it's just up, down, left, right. It's You've got to, like, watch all the different factors going on. There's a lot to um, ad-lib and think about. It's, 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 it's intellectually stimulating in a weird, simplistic way. Like, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of, like, theory involved. To me, like, Donkey Kong never appealed to me. To me, that was always like... It's not about what appeals to you, though. I know, but like, like come bing, on. Like, bing, 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 bing. Yeah, like, you know, you're like... And then you get the, the big things. Pac-Man like, was, was very, was very pattern-oriented because it was the limit of what the technology was at the time. Um, you know, for, for instance, sure. one, one of the ghosts will always turn right if there's an ability to do so. So, you know, uh, same thing with... Um, the red one will always see you. Yeah. Whereas, um, I can't remember what the blue one's name is. Iggy. No, but Inky. anyway, it's Inky. Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. 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 Yeah. Um, but the blue one, for instance, would actually be scared of you. So you, if, if it saw you down a hall, it would actually turn. Even though he could eat you, <laughs> he could eat you. But the only way he would ever eat you would be if he you, you ran accidentally into ran into him. <laughs> That's the only way, really. So there was patterns involved, and the same thing with Donkey Kong. The barrels themselves were actually more random. Um, they were really hard. Um, there was no there. There was a pattern only on the first couple stages, but anyway. 
Yeah, to me, like, Pac-Man is the one that kids show up to play, right? Because it's like... It's well, a, I disagree with that one a little bit, but all right. I think that's the one that everyone's like, hey, we've got some quarters. To so are you trying to tell me that it's the one that people can pick up and play easier? Yeah, I think it's an entry-level game. I think it's like, you know, if you got to keep your arcade going, you got to appeal to the masses, baby. you got to make it easy. you got to make it hard. <laughs> oh, he threw that in there. you got to make it easy. you got to make it hard. Donkey yeah. Kong is too it's hard. It's got all of that. Donkey Kong, if, if you're in an arcade, you want to play a video game. You don't want to just go, eh, I'm going to dabble. Because you want to play. You're there you want to play. You're there to play. play. And if you wanted to argue what you just said, if you're in the arcade business, you want to make quarters. You don't want people playing for. And a long that's time. why I want to. I want to get everybody in there. And Donkey Kong was actually designed for that. Donkey it was Kong designed to make sure people for, eat money. It's designed for the, the only the people, people, who, people have, who like to play video games and wanted the challenge. That's what arcades are all about. I, I, they that's the thing. I want to be just. I want to be the Pac Man offers. I want too. the guy that has my initials on that screen. Yeah. Pac Man offers that too because. Pac-Man, like, yeah, you play level one, it's pretty easy, but, you know, you get up to those higher levels, it's really, really hard. All right. So, we mentioned a little bit about descending uh, from that game. Okay, so now, just to kind of give me a... I think you're kind of uh, really even, quite honestly. <gasps> By the way, I should win. I don't care. <laughs> All right. Yours Revenge is a great game, away. but you Guys, also, you give it to you also you lost about a half an hour to an hour. No, game. but uh, I, I right. should have won. All right. I Shut will up. be down. All right. Two care. Don't care. All right. <laughs> if you could pick any game that's associated with the game that you did pick for future use, what game do you think was the best after that? As an arcade game? Any or game. Any game. As long as it was a video game. Oh. Um, I'm not talking about breakfast cereal because technically both years had breakfast cereal. <laughs> but any game, any game that's associated with that original game. Yep. After that, you could pick. I'd pick the original. And even if, even if your character. Appears in the other game, but it isn't around the game. I'm still okay. Can it not be in the game? Uh, right, as well. long as it's associated with the history of the game, I'm okay with yeah, it. No, I'm, I'll pick the original Super Mario Bros. from the right. original Nintendo. That's a good one. Um, Explain the question. All right. Your character Pac Man spawned a bunch of games, including Pac Man games such as Pac Man World, all those different ones. Oh, yeah. Also appeared in games such as um, Super Smash Brothers and Super Smash Brothers, for instance. So you can pick any games like that that has a legacy of him. Uh, Namco also used them in almost every game they ever made. So. Well, let me tell you something about Pac Man. Let me t- let me hear something about Pac Man. You know they originally got to call him Pac Man. Yep. And that they didn't because they thought the people would just. Erase that part of the P and make him fuck man. Yep, that actually was part of it. That's yeah. pretty funny. I'm actually it surprised was you even knew that. He was fuck man in Japan. I didn't even get an answer to it. I didn't get an answer either. So uh, what are you doing? He's a fucking yellow thing that goes around and eats dots. Like he's not like a dynamic character. Like he's. I think people would disagree with you on that. He's not like he's he's philosophical or he saved the world. He you know he's it, it's a simple. Look up how many Good. games Pac Man. Okay, Dave loses. should I look up how many games Mario's been in? No, I already know that answer. Uh, there's a lot. But I picked the original because, okay, Donkey Kong... Was Tell me why the original is better than the game that he didn't pick. Well, I'll, I'll start, he didn't I'll pick start from the arcade game. The, the Donkey Kong was the very first big hit Nintendo had in North America. It was it was it it started off in Japan, and they were like a small company, but once they... They're a gaming it, company. They did playing cards, stuff like that. They also cards, did the Game & Watch they series. They were a small time. Like they were first. definitely small time. Yeah. And once they Donkey Kong hit here anyway in North America, <laughs> yeah, in Japan, they boom, boom. Yeah. they hit big time. And then they started making their own consoles, and that's when Super Mario Bros. came out. And that's why I picked it because without Donkey Kong, Super Mario Bros. came out. It's not in the eighties. Super Mario was launch but title. Of course it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, stupid. And one. it was Play Choice. It was in the Play Choice arcade Ooh. games too. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, it was a revised uh, version of the ROM, and without, it was harder. Why I picked the Donkey Kong game is without that arcade game. And if you're going to go into an arcade and there's only one game to play, I want to play a game that was spawned basically the whole generation of video games in general and also was difficult. All right. And that's why I made my point about Name one good game that has Pac-Man in it that isn't the name (laughs) Pac-Man. Any game. I don't care. has to be based on Pac-Man because you still haven't given me an answer. I'll give you 10 seconds. Um, I'll give you a hint. No, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't want it. Jeff wins it. <laughs> so that's the final. And Jeff wins the game, which I think he's now the highest rated. However, Dave. 
tight. <laughs> so what, Dave? You lost. And I'm just game. glad I wasn't the guy that had to give Dave the win. So I'm happy. I'm your host, Jody Simpson, and I'm gonna say good night. And uh, obviously, it was a it was a fun game, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and Dave almost squeaked the win this time. But yeah, got caught up on the pack, man. Uh, Congratulations to everybody who tried, especially you. And Chris got oh. got one point. That was good. I always got, get one point. You at least got one he's, point. He's, at least you're consistent. He's good for a pointed episode. So. Yeah. At well, least he, got one point. Let's be clear, he's though. He still point. has a lot more episodes to go before he has your losing streak. True. Yeah. This is true. Anyway, thank you very much, Chris uh, Seymour, as well as, Dave of course. Dave Mater. Jeff Mater. Animator as fact checker, but I couldn't find the Pac-Man. <laughs> All right. Chris Seymour signing out. <laughs> Chris Seymour signed out about an hour ago. And then he came back and started giving me opinions on shit that had nothing to do with him. But anyway. Anyway, good night. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.